think we also begin every meeting with the um, statement that's read uh, for the appeal of decisions from the Metropolitan Transportation Licensing Commission. Pursuant to the provisions of Section 2.68.030 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws, notice is hereby given that if you are not satisfied with a decision made by the, trans by the Metropolitan Transportation Licensing Commission, you may appeal the decision by petitioning for a writ of certiorari with the Davidson County Chancery or Circuit Court. Your appeal must be filed within 60 days of the date of the entry of the Metropolitan Transportation Licensing Commission's decision. We advise that you seek your own independent legal advice to ensure that your appeal is filed in a timely manner and that all procedural requirements have been met. Thank you. Uh, next item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes from the previous meeting. The uh, minutes have been distributed. Uh, do I have a motion? Move to approve. I have a motion. Second. And a second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Minutes are approved. <laughs> we have two public hearings on the agenda. There's been a request to uh, to move uh, Rule 15 ahead of Rule 3. Is there any objection to that? No. Okay. I'd like to start with the um, public hearing on the consideration of Transportation Licensing Commission Taxi Cab Rule Number 15. And anything else you'd like to add to that, Mr. Fields, before we start? I'd be glad to read it into the record if that would be appropriate. If, go ahead. Uh, taxi cab driver, this is Rule 15, head, headed as hospitality training. Taxi cab driver applicants approved for a new permit who successfully completed the Taxi Pro School will be credited with receiving hospitality training within the current training cycle. Certificate holders may negotiate with the Tennessee Foreign Language Institute to sponsor additional Taxi Pro uh, school sessions if approved by the commission. The Metro Ordinance also requires a class. Um, it is not as detailed as that in terms of specific language, but there's uh, there's language in the ordinance that requires it at all. The commission has authority to, uh, you know, the ordinance 672-165 says every newly uh, licensed uh, driver shall attend an approved hospitality training class within 90 days of receiving a driver's permit. Every previously uh, licensed limousine, sedan, and so forth, shall attend an approved uh, hospitality class. So the first deals with newly, newly, uh, newly approved drivers. The second is annual training. So I just wanted to make sure we had that into the record. So what you'll be discussing is uh, rules related to hospitality training. Thank you, sir. Um, we need to, I believe, open the public hearing. And um, we have a uh, request to speak uh, on this particular uh, rule number 15. Um, and I believe they were handed to me in order. Uh, so the first one I have is Mr. Jim Burrow. Good afternoon. I support anything that can expedite the process of a driver getting a permit. That's the biggest obstacle we have. It's just so much time delay from the time they go through the process. And I won't go through it because we did that in the last meeting. But uh, anything we can do to ex ex that expedite that process so when a person comes to the office and never driven a taxi before, we can get them on the road much quicker because we're losing, we're losing opportunities because, as we know, the ride share companies are putting them on the road the same day they apply. Show up with your car, you're on the road, you're on the work today. We sometimes are tied up for weeks and then over a month at times. And it's uh, really putting us at a disadvantage. And uh, anything that uh, you ladies and gentlemen can do to facilitate that process, well, I'd greatly appreciate it. And I believe all the cab companies would. Thank you, Mr. Thank Burrow. You. Uh, next is uh, uh, Mr. Solomon from Taxi USA. Good afternoon, Michael Solomon, Taxi USA. We are a Nashville Cab Allied Cab and Taxi Taxi. We brought this item up at the last meeting and then it was brought to this meeting as a public hearing. Uh, our concern is just as Mr. Burroughs described, the time to get a new driver never taxied before onto the road is rather lengthy. Um, and by the time we get them through the processes that we go through and they get their license and they take the foreign language test, they could wait weeks, three weeks, four weeks. By the time they get on the road, they already have another job and they're driving something else. 
Uh, at the last meeting, we spoke about uh, the number of taxi licensed permit drivers in the city. Um, you know, years ago, and some of you were present, most weren't, that we, we fought for years to get additional permits in our fleet. We asked for 75 to meet the demand on our call count. We had 15,000 calls a week that we couldn't answer. So we tried and tried. Finally, we got approved. And the commission, in all their wisdom at that time, decided that because I proved need and necessity for my company based on our call counts and the need for additional taxi cabs, that I proved need and necessity for Nashville to have additional taxi cabs. And then the market grew uh, exponentially. So now we have uh, an exorbitant number of permits available, and we still have the same number of drivers from years ago. That has not changed. So what we're trying to do, uh, and I can only speak for my, my company in this case, and I guess Mr. Burroughs inferred, uh, bring drivers in that have never been taxi drivers before. And this process, this Rule 15, uh, has certain requirements. And we think those requirements are very important. We support them. We are part of that process to get them to happen. Hospitality training is very important. We provide that to, uh, to our drivers. Others do the same. Um, we want the, the driver to get the steps done that aren't on a calendar and then have the opportunity for the licensing commission to give them a temporary permit on the condition that they take the next available class. That class is given only once a month. And if we're lucky enough to get a driver to subscribe to our service and it's two days after the class, it's a month before they can get into that class, so it's a month or more before they can get behind the wheel and actually serve the residents and visitors of Davidson County, and that's just too long. And all taxi companies benefit from this, so does the public, uh, visitors, and uh, the residents alike. So we're hoping that you'll take that into consideration and whatever's in the power of this commission to make the change, to accelerate the process, to get a driver on the road to serve the public is the most important thing here, and, and that's what I'm here to talk about today. Who says that? Have you finished? Of course, yes, sir. Okay, sorry. Uh, who sets the date of the class? The, the commission. The commission? Well, the... We work with in essence, it's that. Okay. Institute to establish uh, times every month. There used to be so many drivers, there was more. There was two classes a month. Yeah. But there's so few, now there's now to one. Okay. So. All right. Thank you. And if we're lucky enough that the driver, we bring him on a week before the class, well, he can get in the class in a week, and it's not an issue. But somehow that just doesn't work. <laughs> Murphy <laughs> solves that problem for us. <laughs> Any questions for Mr. Solomon? You got a suggested solution? Well, yeah, the solution is that once the, the other required things that are not on a calendar, the test, mm -hmm. the backgrounds, all of those things, the driver gets all of that. We've already approved them through our process. We do 50 state background check. We run their MVR. We do all of those things. They do background checks that's required under the code. They get the language test done. Then they're laying in wait. Once they've done those things, then they apply on a conditional temporary permit to get that permit through that class. If they fail to attend that class or pass that class, then at that point their temporary is gone. We want to give them the opportunity to get on the road to do those things. Those, these drivers have been drivers. It's not like they're brand new drivers. They're just brand new taxi drivers. So we all need the drivers to get so, into the service sooner. So the suggestion is to issue them a temporary permit until they complete this class. That's exactly right. The one thing that's on a calendar that, that we have not, no not way Not until to. they complete, until the next class is available. That is correct. Okay. That is correct. Which could be <coughs> 29 days or Ex well, Exactly. One day. That is correct. Okay. Any other questions for Mr. Sullivan? Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, next, we have uh, Mr. Uh, Doug Trimble. I, I can't add anything on this particular rule and what Mr. Burrow and Mr. Sullivan have already said, so fine. We appreciate that. And next we have um, Mr. Solomon Tadeli. <coughs> I'm sorry to say that, but uh, I'll be a little different than them. Uh, I, as a driver, as a Nash Vegas uh, cab driver, also a Nashville residence, I think the regulations that has been in place are working. I got better from where I started as a taxi driver in Nashville. It's not like to touch anybody else. But this is what I feel, is the regulation is most important thing that the city has done. <clears throat> That's the only way we can be differentiated from Uber and Lyft drivers. They're driving with a, a sandal on their shoes, a, a pajama, a short, without checking. So what does it make us? It looks like it will make me a little bit disgraced from a taxi cab professional. So. That's all I have, and I hope you take it to consideration. Thank, Thank you, sir. You. Any questions for Mr. Patel? No. Next in the queue is uh, <laughs> Mr. Abakar. Thank 
Yes, sir. My name is Ahmed Abukar. Um, we appreciate, you know, the last time that we have asked you to waive some or, or eliminate some of the regulations that we have before, like the uh, DOT, and you have saved for our, for us $120 for that, but that's one day that we are going to doctor. So on behalf of the cab drivers, we appreciate about that, you know. Second, uh, as you can see, my waiver that I, I gave to you, this is requirement for a taxi driver to pay every year. Uh, so there is a lot of competition in town. If we pay all this money, and uh, how can we compete with Uber and Lyft? There is no way. Plus, for, I want to bring your attention, the cars working here for Uber in this city, they are coming from outside. Not only Tennessee, not only Davidson County, they are coming from 50 cities. <coughs> not only that, these days we have seen car with a tag number on Ontario, Canada, which is working here in Tennessee, picking up people from the hotels, picking up from uh, businesses. So there is no way that we can compete you know, in that way. So we are asking, kindly asking the commission to make a proposal to someone have to review the laws that was written 40 years ago. So, so this uh, public hearing is in regards to yeah. Rule 15, the hospitality training? Yeah, do hospitality training. Do you have any points yeah, on the, the hospitality yes, training? Yes, that's all. You, you see, I'm driving 15 years in Nashville. I know every angle. Even I used to drive before the GBS come. We used to uh, read a map. <coughs> every year we go down there for two, three hours, wasting our time. Because I know more than the, the, the woman who's telling me a restaurant is open there and there, and because I'm dealing with that restaurant every day. So I don't know why we need the hospitality class this, uh, uh, every year. So I oppose you now the hospitality class. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Abakar? Nope. OK. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you. Next on the uh, request to speak is uh, Mr. Mahari Waldekadan. Thank you so much. I hope you've been doing okay. Uh, I guess I can say a few words about hospitality class. I wanted to speak on uh, Rule 3. Well, we'll have time for uh, Rule 3 later. Yeah, but the hospital, since I'm here, you know, if you want me to, to say, I support the hospitality training, even though it's redundant, you know, uh, I mean, every year, you know, we hear about the same stuff, you know, maybe a new restaurant, a new business, a new hotel open. If uh, it could be tweaked a little bit, you know, into where it would be uh, much more helpful, especially for the new drivers, uh, that would be uh, all I could say, you know, uh, drivers, uh, I mean, as a new driver, if I put myself, it is a plus, it's not a minus. It's a, it's a helpful thing to have a hospitality class. But for these drivers that have been on the road, you know, it's a requirement, we have to go through it. But, you know, other than the few things that are really new, uh, it's just not productive, to be honest. Uh, so I don't know what what is best, but I'm just, you know, voicing uh, in that opinion, anything to expedite the driver to be on the road is helpful, but it's good to have that training as well. As a new driver, I'm looking at somebody new that have never done that business uh, or driving a cab because it's a reflection. Any customer that is uh, coming to the town, like airports and so forth, he's representing the city, representing all of us, you know, including the drivers and the residents. So uh, I say the training is, pos you know, is a positive thing for the new drivers, uh, but maybe they need to do some tweaking, you know, for the existing drivers uh, instead of maybe once a year, probably doing it twice, twice a year or something for the existing drivers or some different agendas on what kind of substances to train on uh, based on what is happening, you know, on, on the city versus uh, 
driver experience, customer experience, and so forth. Uh, that's all I have to say about that, and I'll come back for Ruth. Thank you. Are there any questions for Mr. Woldekadan? No. no. Uh, is there anyone else uh, wishing to speak on uh, the consideration of tax cab rule 15? I know Mr. Clements said he wanted to speak, and I probably should have had him fill out a form. I just didn't because he's a frequent flyer. We expect him to be at our <laughs> meetings, I guess. Maybe we can get him to fill out the form later. Yeah, we can do that. I'll okay. we'll mail it in. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for the opportunity. We're in total sympathy with the difficulty in finding employees. It's probably the number one problem in this community right now. We had 100 businesses in our boardroom this morning, and again and again we heard how hard it is to find new employees and keep them. Um, so I understand the need for getting a driver in in a hurry. But let me give you two different examples here that I think will illustrate why we think it's critical. We had a lady fly into the airport, unidentified, just walked up to a cab, got in, and um, the cab driver named Steve, I don't want to reveal anything other than he was nominated to be one of our hit makers and was one of our hit makers, which is a, somebody who gave stellar service that month. Um, Steve blew this woman away with his facts and knowledge of the city. Um, everywhere they, and she rode around with him for a while. Everywhere they went, he said, oh, you got to be sure and see this, and don't miss this while you're in Nashville. Well, the next morning, that woman met with our staff. She's an editor for Southern Living. She was deciding whether or not to put together a promotion with Nashville for a year-long promotion. She came in, and everything the driver had told her was absolutely the truth and, and great customer service. So there's one example. And if that driver had started yesterday and just thrown out, would he have been as good? I don't know, but he was because she took note of it and nominated him. The other one that to me is even more important is we had a group called Hearth and Patio. Huge, huge convention. Um, there was a board member and they were deciding whether to come to Nashville or go to New Orleans. <coughs> board member got in the cab at the airport. He was absolutely set on, we're going to go to New Orleans. I don't want to come to Nashville. Two hours later, the cab driver had blown him away again by his knowledge of the city and what he told this guy. The guy the next morning went to the board and suggested, forget New Orleans, we want to bring our meeting to Nashville. Not only did they bring it uh, last year, 7,000 people, they booked to come back in 18, 21, and 24. So one good cab driver acting the way you hoped that they would act um, sold us 28, 30,000 people over the next few years here. So can we say that, that that wouldn't have happened without the training? No, but we can certainly say with the training and with their knowledge of the city, they are great ambassadors, and that's what we hope they are. Do you all have any questions for Mr. Clemens? I, I have one. It's not a question. I'm just asking your opinion on something. What if we <clears throat> made the ruling that within the first month they have to go to training uh, for a temporary, and they're not allowed to go to the airport until after they've completed that? that training I'm not sure how you enforce that I mean I that certainly sounds plausible to me um, the other thing that I, I should have mentioned is is there is some redundancy in in what they hear each time but it last year alone we had 90 new restaurants I doubt whether any of us could name off even <laughs> a fourth of them let alone all 90 of them we don't cover all 90 but we certainly cover as many as we can we put a lot of emphasis in the last couple of years over neighborhoods, which through the years there's always been complaints that cab drivers don't spend enough time in neighborhoods. Well, we hope they will, and we're giving the reasons why those neighborhoods are important and what they can do in those neighborhoods with, with people, visitors to the cities. Um, we think it's fairly important. We like, if, if you want to tweak it somewhat, right now we're doing uh, one a month. We will do whatever it needs to be done to make sure that we get drivers on the road in a hurry. Thank you. Is there anyone else wishing you speak on the public hearing for Rule 15? Uh, should we allow I, I, do your, overs? If you'd I think like to do overs, I think it's up to you. Ah, uh, all right. We do have a timer over there. We'll have to instruct the uh, commissioner. <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll, we'll allow 30 seconds. I, I just have a point to make. So, so I come from a, a small city in, in Florida called Fort Lauderdale, and we have this program called Sensational Service Training, which is akin to what you guys do here. It's a little more broad, uh, maybe a lot more broad. 
Um, and every line level employee in the hospitality industry has to go through this program. It does not a condition of their job, but everybody's committed to putting their people through it. There's an awful lot of pressure put on these 700 cab drivers that they're the ones that are representing the people that come to the city because they're the ones that have to take a class to be able to work. There's 10,000 or 20,000 or who knows how many, I don't know if they are, line level employees working in the hospitality industry in Davidson County, line level people that deal with exactly the same people that our cab drivers do that aren't required to go through this program, but somehow they can find the restaurant. And, and then the burden of our driver having to go through this class and expect for them to encapsulate everything they gather in this training class and the day they're there and be able to be responsive to the specific and, and direct questions of the passengers in their cars, it's impossible to put that burden on the driver. Does it help? It absolutely helps. But our drivers learn by doing. They learn by being out there on the street. They learn by being at these establishments. No, and that's completely different than a concierge, a doorman, a housekeeper, a bellman, the parking lot attendant, a valet, any of them. They aren't going through this. They're applying for a job. They're passing a drug test. They're going to work tomorrow. Our driver's waiting. They're waiting for the opportunity to, to, to earn a living, to feed their face and their family, and to serve the residents of Israel Davidson County. This class does not make a taxi driver a hero or a star or a hit maker, as he put it. It does make them better. Any class does. But it's not the sole condition of becoming a successful uh, uh, ambassador to this community. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Burrow. I would like to say that. I agree with what Mr. Solomon said, which is rare, but I do. <laughs> no, but nevertheless, what I wanted to say is, uh, I don't know what other companies are doing, but I know what we're doing. I know what I'm doing. We don't put people out on the street because Mr. Fields hands them a permit and say you're a cab driver. We, we train our drivers. They go through office training. They go through training with a dr another driver that knows how to train, and they're put out on the street when they're ready. Usually take two, three days. Sometimes it could take a week. I can take a week, but they, but they're not put out there just because they're issued a permit. I mean, the thinking that we just uh, turn them loose and we totally depend on the hospitality class. I'm pretty sure that they're not they're not putting them out there that way either. They didn't when I worked at that company, and I'm pretty sure they don't now. Right. And uh, we we we're more responsible industry than that. And uh, we we would like to have some opportunity to show them and. The fact that we only got 700 cab drivers in Nashville, and there's probably 50,000 uh, ride chairs out there, and the burden shouldn't be put all on us anyway. But uh, we'll take that responsibility and uh, and handle it. And uh, yes, we can uh, limit them to the streets, and not the airport. To your question, that can be done very, very easily by each company. That's not a if that's a consideration that can be done. It's not a, it, it wouldn't be a problem. Thank and, um, you, Mr. Pearl. Thank you very much. Ms. Tribble, your uh, second swing on this? No, my first. Yeah, well, I know. You, you passed on the first one. <laughs> I apologize. Yeah. Doug Tribble with Yellow Cab. The ideal scenario that we need on this is, is for the new drivers to have to go through this hospitality training, uh, give them their temporary permits, give them a, maybe 120 days to complete this this hospitality course or this class and then don't require it for three years or ever four years every year is excessive they don't need it every year I agree that they should have it upon coming into the, the industry in our business give them maybe 120 days to complete the class while they're driving and learning a little bit with their temporary permit or whatever and then just make them go through it every four years as opposed to every year that's the ideal scenario thank you thank you Mr. Tribble Yes, sir. The last speaker on uh, rule number 15. Uh, Your Honor, um, <laughs> no. like um, as a board, I was a board member at Nash Vegas Cab. Also, I am a driver. I am on the street. Jim Burrow or Dag, whatever he say Dag, is more reasonable uh, at the last. But this hospitality class is necessary for all of us to get into this business. That's what makes us a taxi driver profession. I do it for, I, I am proud of what I do <coughs> as a driver, not as a company shareholder or board member. This is important entrance to be a taxi driver. That's where we are different than from Uber and Lyft. And the commissioner have said it. I am, I might be Steve. He didn't tell you your name, but, uh, the name, but I might be one of them. 
because I take care of my customers. You know, the first thing, uh, one customer I had from New York, she came into the Nashville, and I was letting somebody pass me. She said, oh, even the taxi drivers in Nashville don't hang like New York. So we take care of our customers. This is our city. This is our people. We have, I have family. I have three children. I'm married. I have a house like everybody else. But I do not what Mr. Solomon or Doug does. I drive on the street of Nashville. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Uh, we will close the uh, public hearing for Rule 15. And uh, again, this was brought before us because of the difficulty in filling driver positions, some of it uh, uh, perhaps related to the requirement for the hospitality training uh, prior to getting their permit. Um, anything to add on that, Mr. Fields? There, we have some, in the general conversation, just in general, the, the, of the things in that part of the public hearing, the fees at the core at the commission have not been increased since 2000. The drivers are paying exactly the same today in terms of what we charge as we did then, just for the record. Um, there are, there is some, the commission has some wiggle room for lack of a better way to put it, and some of the things we do, the code in, in speaking with, with, uh, the code's some specific that that will require some council change, we think, and I'll turn back to Ms. Costonas to talk about that. Yeah, I, I don't think a mere, depending on what of the input that you just received you want to accomplish, um, if any. Um, I don't know that a mere amendment of Rule 15 is going to accomplish any of it because of the code provisions that we spoke with last time being fairly specific, and the two code provisions um, are um, the one about the test, um, which says that it has to be done at the time of the initial application for a driver permit. And then the one about the hospitality training says it, um, it has to be done according to the amendment to our rule, um, uh, to our code, excuse me, that passed last year. Um, that that an amendment actually deleted the 90-day period and provided that the, the hospitality training must be done prior to receiving a driver's permit. So between those two requirements in the code, there, there, is, a requirement, there is a provision in the code for a temporary permit, but it specifically refers to only um, a delay for the results of the police investigation for the background check. Um, so that doesn't really help us with this issue, and it probably doesn't get us around the need for the test at the time of the initial application anyway. So I think maybe council changes to those three provisions would be needed in order to allow the drivers to begin working prior to the hospitality training and the three-day training that, um, at which the test is administered. Um, and. Um, Therefore, I mean, this commission can make a recommendation to the Metropolitan mm -hmm. Council that um, the code be changed, but you can't actually affect that yourselves. So the Rule 15 will would stand unless and and would stay in place. We I mean, could you could tweak it to to be consistent with with, with whatever the code is ultimately changed to be, mm -hmm. but um, you won't without changing the code. You can't do anything right. more really. Yeah. Okay. So, so we could amend Rule 15 and make a recommendation to the council. Yes. But we would have to tell the taxi cab applicants they couldn't, they'd have to comply with the code. They'd have to what? I'm comply sorry. with the code as it currently sits or stands. Until council, until council changes it, yeah. yes. Okay. Unless and until council The best changes. part about the existing 15 is the code, because we, we've been trying to find, okay, how could we, how could we improve, how could we help? The cab companies themselves may negotiate mm -hmm. specifically mm -hmm. with the Tennessee Foreign Language Institute. If the companies wanted to, and I'm certainly having to facilitate a meeting, if the companies wanted to facilitate, if, if they wanted me to facilitate a meeting to talk about how could we change to make it more readily available, mm -hmm. 
the commission staff was, is not going to be opposed to the, 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 them working how you know working it out to stay in compliance. They, I mean, the only the only other things we can do as a staff is we if you have a recommendation to the council, we can certainly work with legal to develop what you'd want to recommend or take your plain language to the council and let them develop their own amendments. Uh, you know, we'll we'll certainly take whatever you have to the to the council, but we we probably we certainly can facilitate a meeting. With Tennessee Forward Language Institute, they're they're a, they're a government agency like we are with the state, so they want to do whatever it can to help provide services. So we'd certainly be happy to do that. But you it can seems do that like without amending the rule. But it seems the Tennessee Foreign Language Institute wants to have the class when there's enough drivers to attend, and that's going to be so haphazard each month as to when there's enough people coming in and filling out permits. There, there were, at one time, there were enough drivers applying every month mm -hmm. that we would have classes twice a month. We have training classes, we have night, of the hospitality classes, we have about 19 a year. So when we'll get down to July, to June and July, we'll do four, we'll do a class a week to mm -hmm. make sure the drivers have more than ample opportunity to come to class. That's the, that's the afternoon class that we teach for the existing drivers. So you've got the new applicants coming in and then the people have to do it each year anyway correct okay. the ordinance requires the drivers attend that all existing drivers mm -hmm. attend a class a year mm -hmm. it does not specifically talk about what's in that class other than calling it hospitality we work with uh, with the convention visitors corporation to uh, develop the curriculum uh, the curriculum is very focused on Nashville mostly because now I mean folks on what's going on new in Nashville most because there is so much happening uh, when I came back in 2012, the first year, we were spending our time on uh, very specific information on ADA compliance and all the cabs, how to deal with uh, individuals in chairs, how to deal with service animals and that sort of thing. We've modified it a little bit uh, just to get to that get to that level. But we're, we'll certainly work with the companies, with Foreign Language Institute, with council, depending on, on the directions you'd like to go. We're just, as a staff, there's just not a lot we can do within our constraints. And it, Go ahead, Tom. And it appears as a commission there's not a lot we can do with Rule 15 either other than make a recommendation to the council if, if that were. If well, we, we can amend would. Rule 15. You can. Well, yeah. that's true, and but it would just wouldn't have any effect. To, yeah, and then make a recommendation to the council to amend mm -hmm. the code. I was also going to say, what if we tweaked Rule 15 and made a recommendation to the council to amend the code to allow temporary permits while, for, say, 28, 20, 30 days for them to get through the the hospitality class. Um, I think it might be an easy tweak to amend 672-140-B um, to say the licensing commission or its staff may issue a temporary permit prior to receiving, and there, it, what it actually says now is the results of the police investigation, yeah. you could maybe add in there, the results of the police investigation or the completion of the required hospitality training, mm -hmm. but then you, they, they would have a 90-day period under that particular statute. But that still doesn't quite get you around 672-135. That would probably get you around 672-165, I think. But that doesn't quite get you around 672-135 because that says at the time of initial application for a permit. So they actually, and that's the one about the test. Um, so they actually have to turn in the test results in theory at the same time that they submit their initial application. So a temporary permit isn't going to help with that because it's actually a prerequisite that has to accompany your application for your permit. Whereas I think, I think the temporary would normally come into play after your application had been submitted but before your formal permit had been, your permanent permit or annual permit had been granted. Does that make sense? There was a time where we issued prior to some of these changes back in 2000, 2002, 2003, in, in that area, where we issued temporary permits on a pretty regular basis. We, um, there were there were issues from the standpoint of of getting drivers, just getting drivers to come back in. We, I will say, the drivers are more orderly today than they were then. I think, to their credit, uh, but there are issues just. Dep again, depending on length of time and such. <coughs> Maybe I'm missing something, but the test part of it, 
is that also completed during the Taxi Pro School? Yes. Okay, so it's Taxi Pro School is a three-day class. Yeah. So here's what happens to a new driver. A new driver replies. They come to the office. Where they do what they do at our office. They are then sent to the Tennessee Foreign Language Institute. The Foreign Language Institute does it administers a test to determine their uh, fluency in English, writing, speaking, conversing. Uh, assuming they pass to the next level, then they're going to do a three-day class. A three-day class consists of, of uh, first day, one day consists of map reading, I mean literal map reading, not GPSing, but how do you read, this is national. Another day is rules and regs of the commission and the ordinance. Then the third day is hospitality, and it's all the way from why we're being hospitable to these are, this is these are the things that Nashville, these are the most critical things you need to know about Nashville in terms of the hospitality industry. I think the hospitality, that particular portion is very similar to what is taught to the hotel, the concierge, and that sort of thing that, that all the hotels send them to. Very similar to what I think Ms. Saul was talking about, the, the, the one that they, mm -hmm. they will do the same sort of thing for the hotel. The, and again, Mr. Clemens can talk a lot more about the hospitality part than I can, but they would they would provide that kind of a class as well. You don't follow the code because there's no test administered at the time of the application. The test is administered a month later. The code says at the time of the application. Well, we couldn't, but we, no, we don't follow we, the code. I mean, I guess the, re the result of that would be that the application would be deemed incomplete until the test is yeah. finished. We really started that mostly just to get people out to try to move it at the same time because our goal would be to, I mean, our goal, I promise you, we want to move the paperwork out of our office as quick as we can as well. We, again, from legal, legal advice as we were sitting here, I'm not sure what we can do to move it more than I thought we could do. And each year, every driver has to go through the whole three-day class? No, go through, a, oh, and I, it's, it's usually an hour and a half to two hours. Okay. Refresher class. Hmm. Thoughts, commissioners? So the Tennessee Foreign Language Institute, they decide on the schedule when those classes mm -hmm. are, and they, they teach all three days of those, or just the, the hospitality? They, they arrange for the teaching. They, 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 the they, they take care of the class. The we days. work with them on, on uh, the test itself. I typically, <laughs> probably on an annual basis, I'll say, let's see the test. They have a random test. They have a bank of questions that have been fed into a computer that produce the test. Um, the, uh, they have to complete 80%. Uh, they have to pass a test. Every day has a test. I should. I didn't say that. Every day has a test. They have to complete 80% or better, or they fail, and they can then retake the test. They will only make them take that one test again, everyone they, if, until they pass it. Well, it sounds like choices between letting Mr. Solomon and everybody go up to the council and get it changed first, and then come down and we change ours, if the council deems it wise to change it, the code, or we tweak some things here and make a recommendation to council if that's what we think is the best thing to do. And I think often the council looks to us for the recommendation. Clearly the council can basically rewrite all of it that it wants to rewrite, changing, add in, take out. So they, you know, if they chose to, they could say that it's a, a two-day class or it's a five-day class or it's a no-day class. They could, as Mr. Trimble suggested, only go to class every four years. Um, I have, I, I tend to think that since I go to the, since I attend usually 18 out of the 19 classes, I usually learn something every time I go to class. But, I, you know, I haven't been doing this long, so I guess I need to learn more. But. And then we balance between making it easier for the taxi companies to, yep. to be attractive to new taxi yep. drivers and also respecting the fact that we need to uh, make sure that people are out there, know the city, know what's yep. going on or so there's not too long a period of time where they might not have gone to that class. I can assure, and they, I, think, I know they know this, while I have to abide by the rules that we have, I want the drivers to be on the street as quickly as they can. There's, there is not a benefit for us not having the drivers on the street. We trained about 1,100 drivers last year, I think just a little less than that, that went through the, the one-day class, mm -hmm. or the afternoon class. Um, we're, we at one time we were doing 18 or 19, sometimes twice a month through the taxi pro class. And, you know, we were doing 35 or 40 drivers a month. And I think that yesterday we had four in class, only three showed. So, you know, they'll, they did day one yesterday. They're doing day two today. They'll come back and finish on Monday. And then Monday afternoon they'll come by and get their permit. 
or Tuesday morning. All three. Oh, yeah. That's clearly the ride share companies or the transportation network companies as they're formally called, they certainly have a, an advantage, which is the reason we asked y'all to pass a local ordinance that allowed us to regulate them until the state took away our authority to regulate. Fair enough. There's somebody keeps raising his hand back there, but I figured I'd let you tell me over me close. Yeah, I mean, we'll just leave it as it is. Okay. Commissioners? We can make a suggestion to the council and, uh, and uh, or we can wait. <coughs> if we make a suggestion to the council, we might control a little bit more of the outcome. Possible. Have a little I'd, like, I'd like to know what folks think as far as the balancing here between getting folks on the street quickly and the need to make sure they're I familiar think it, with it. If we're not able to get uh, the Tennessee Foreign Language Institute to do it bi monthly, mm -hmm. then we probably need to look at um, a temporary 30 day scenario, not 90 days, 30 days, um, and see if we can't. I don't, Mr. Clements uh, is, is unsure whether we can uh, keep them from going to the airport until that 30-day time frame up is up. I think that's the most important scenario because that is where you meet people coming in fresh that have no idea. Sometimes when they're here for a few days, they're going to hear other things and they're going to know more. <clears throat> um, but I think it's important on both sides. So it's a good problem to have that you want to get them on the road and hospitality, et cetera, wants to make sure they know what they're talking about. We just have to find a way to make that come together and work for all of us. And uh, if they're not going to do it bi-monthly, then I think the only other choice is to give a temporary for 30 days uh, until they can take the class. Because they do do it every month, correct? Yes, they do every month. We have a schedule through the end of the year. Okay. I, I'd be happy to speak with them about adding a, a second class. I'm not sure that, I mean, They'd probably have a class for one person. That's, I think that would be their biggest problem they would have if they did it twice mm -hmm. a month. But they, they certainly did do it, so they're, they're, no, they're open I, I to it. It's a matter of having a class. I understand. I'm just trying to find sure. a bridge I understand. between the two things. Is there a deadline on how, when new drivers have to sign up for that class? Mm, they, can, they could go in. The day uh, there, was a, there, there once was a deadline when the classes were full. I don't think they have a deadline really now. I think it's a matter of getting the paperwork done so on their end. Get it done the yeah. day before. Yeah. Maybe, the tip, well, probably not the class. day of, but the day before, probably, yeah. So they would have to have it on their schedule and not know if there would be anybody in it. They just have to, they'd have to, the English proficiency issue would be dealt with first, and then assuming that was, then they could go ahead and apply for the, the school and they qualify for the school, so. I like the idea of starting with the Foreign Language Institute and seeing if they can do a bi-monthly. That's my thought. And then if not, maybe the temporary 30 days. And I agree with you. I think it should only be 30 days if we go that route. So we start by asking Mr. Fields to uh, broker an arrangement with uh, okay. TFLI. So I'll make a motion to defer consideration of rule Taxi cab rule 15 until we hear back from Mr. Fields on the uh, on whether Tennessee Foreign Language Institute will uh, start offering bi-monthly classes. I have a motion to uh, defer consideration until a report from Mr. Fields is delivered to us. Do you want to put a time right, limit on that? Fine. Next, uh, I think they can give you an answer by the next Absolutely. meeting in March. All okay. right. So I have a motion. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Uh, next item on the agenda is a consideration of the suspension of uh, taxi cab rule number three. And the consideration of, well, it, it has been suspended. Uh, and so we'll, we'll consider that, whether to keep it suspended or to unsuspend it. Um, Individuals wishing to, uh, we need to open the public hearing on um, 
consideration of Rule 3. Um, I think I probably have the same people interested in speaking on Rule 3. <coughs> Is that correct? Probably. All right. I will try to reorder this and go in the same order. And I think we started off with Mr. Burrow. And uh, just uh, before you start, uh, Mr. Burrow, um, Mr. Fields, can you give us a quick rundown on Rule 3, which is currently suspended? Rule 3 was suspended on February the 26, 2015, two years ago with this meeting. I'll, it's titled Retention of Taxi Cab Permits. All cab companies presently operating 10 cabs or less shall be allowed to retain one extra permit only. All cab companies presently operating more than 10 cabs shall be allowed to retain extra permits in a number equal to 10% of the number of cabs in operation. All permits in excess of these quotas, as defined above, shall automatically be canceled 30 days from the date of their issuance. Any permit cancellation executed by the staff of the Transportation Licensing Commission may be appealed to the Commission <laughs> only on the basis of the staff's action by using inaccurate inf uh, vehicle information or insurance and registration information. Original intent of, the order of that particular rule that I recall was to make sure that permits were being used. There was a, yep. there was a time where all companies basically kept all their cabs busy and if they didn't the commission wanted to be advised on when they were not there was a time when we had about 500 cab drivers you do remember those days <laughs> <laughs> okay um sorry mr Burrell, to uh interrupt you there um and go ahead please i also remember those days very well <laughs> as i found my oldest permit it was 1986 i don't know if i had one before then or not but i had one that year and, uh, I remember those days very well. They're they're gone. I addressed the rule. I don't, uh, in my opinion, and I've talked to some other people. We don't believe the rule really applies to this day and age. It applied to a time gone by that we're talking about back in those days. Now uh, we'd all fill our our pump permits if we could. Uh, we we're asking for help on getting the the rule 15 help so we can attract drivers because we 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 pay for these permits that. To, at your privilege, you issue them us and give us allow us the privilege to use the permits. We also are charged for them every quarter, whether we have a car in them or not. We pay for them. With over 700 permits open, uh, we're paying a 126,000 or better a year, all the companies combined. Uh, we're paying over a quarter of a million dollars in the last two years, more than that, for the privilege of holding those permits. Uh, none of us paid that money with the anticipation that somebody would come and remove them. We believe that rule was put to bed, so to speak, and because it didn't apply anymore. And now we spend a lot of money. We all have business plans. We're all developing ways to try and figure out, fill our permits and uh, grow our industry back. And uh, some of us are doing better than others. Uh, I picked up, uh, I, I put four cars on the last two days. Uh, I probably wouldn't be able to do much more of that with some of the small companies I operate. I operate Quick Cab, Pink Cab, Music City. So if we had 10% rule, uh, some of the smaller companies don't have four or five permits uh, left if you took them. And uh, with one sweep of buying some cars or with one sweep of three or four owner operators coming and wanting to join us or new drivers, uh, we'd be full. And we couldn't develop our business plan to make any profit. And the rule could potentially put the small companies out of business because they wouldn't be able to grow. Small companies are hanging on by thread now, in my opinion. And uh, they are, they're profitable, but not, not, not to any great extent. And so we need to hold on to those permits with our, and form our business plans and, and develop it. And uh, like I say, some companies do better than others, depending on how aggressive you, you, you try to build your companies. Uh, we work pretty hard at our office. We've got a staff and there. And, we got our dispatch and we got other people now. We work pretty hard to develop a, a strategy to, to um, track drivers and to build our companies. Uh, like I say, we didn't want to pay that money and let it go to waste. And I'm sure you understand that. It's, it was a business expense. Uh, we also have begun to meet as an industry. Most of the companies attend uh, once a month. We're trying to 
grow as an industry, meet as, as owners and managers, and uh, try to improve the service to the public, and that's where the answer is. Better service, better drivers, more business. That's what we're working on, working hard to do that. My rule is we try and pick up every call we get. It's, we try very hard, no matter if we're going to the beauty shop or the airport, we try to pick up every call. We, we, we work hard at that. If you come to our office, be glad to, you ask anybody, any dispatcher in there, if that's not the rules, and then see what they tell you. Sounds good. You're welcome to come anytime. Any questions for Mr. Burrell? I think I've said about enough. I probably used up my time, but uh, All right. I'm sorry if I talk too long. No. But, uh, this, is, this, is, this is a serious issue to me. This is one of the most serious issues. We put a lot of money into to keeping these permits and trying to build our companies, and I think it would be a real, real hard thing. On I'd like to see the board actually not suspend the rule. I'd like to see them abolish the rule, which you have the power to do. It's a rule. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. If you have any questions, I'll be glad to entertain. All right. Thank you, Mr. Perlman. Uh Mr. Uh, Solomon. Again, Michael Solomon, Taxi USA of Tennessee. Um, uh, I actually agree with Mr. Burrow. <laughs> uh, that, that is a uh, the record. Be really nervous. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, you know it's, he's saying exactly. He said it exactly the way it needs to be said. That the challenge is the times are completely different than they were in the past. And as I said previously in the the last public hearing, it took me four years to get the permits I needed to be able to to operate the business that I already had. That wasn't to grow the business that I wanted to have or a marketing plan that said we're going to invest all this money and try and get more calls. We already had the business and I couldn't sell it to the commission. I couldn't get anybody to agree. And then the fourth year they said, Mr. Solomon, finally you get it. We give you your 75 permits. I only asked for 75 that day. And I think there was 500 permits issued that day. It was, it was, it was a disaster. The whole world changed that day. Um, to abolish this rule is the solution. Uh, in short, to leave it suspended, <laughs> that's better than, than removing the suspension. Because as Mr. Fields can attest to, drivers are just moving around from company to company. The only winners here are the body shops doing the paint jobs and changing these cars' colors. Um, we're not winning. We're still not getting our calls answered. Um, we, we operate 17 wheelchair vans, and thankfully every day those vehicles are out on the road. We do about 30,000 wheelchair trips a year. Um, that would be a disaster if we lost the opportunity to have enough drivers to deliver that service because every driver doesn't want to drive a wheelchair van. So guys move back and forth within our fleet and change and operate those vehicles to deliver service to those folks that need it. That's not the sole reason. It said, as Mr. Burroughs said, the times have changed considerably. And holding permits in escrow in the old days was a value because there was a value in dollars to those permits where people actually paid for the right to have a permit. When a guy was going to leave a company, they sold their slot to the next guy. Well, those days are over. Um, and we'd like to, and we've tried, and we've lost 11 drivers due to this permit process time frame that wanted to come over, that we get them through, get them through our backgrounds, do our stuff. They're ready to go waiting for class. They just can't wait. So short of 15th being fixed, this rule three is still just, uh, uh, they're, they're both the same problem. And we have to be able to, to sustain ourselves and deliver service. Some companies in this market actually take phone orders and thousands of phone orders in some cases, and you have to have drivers to deliver those calls. And if we lose the permits that we're not actually operating today, and then tomorrow we have drivers that are willing, for whatever reason, who knows what happens, I can't put them on the road. they got to come back to you at an annual meeting once a year and say, hey, I need more permits and this is why. And then you got to talk about it and hopefully grant, let me, grant me relief. And then hopefully those drivers are still there. I mean, it's one of the only industries in the, in the country um, where we're controlled by this mechanism uh, on growth. And, and now with the TNCs not being able to be regulated here, this unlevel playing field, and we don't talk about TNCs very much because we know we don't have any, can't fix it. Um, without having any control of what they do, we have to hold on to what we have so that we have the opportunity for the ebbs and the flows in the industry. The tourism goes up and goes down. People take cabs every day. And without the opportunity to grow or not grow um, with the numbers that exist already, we all have permits that we're holding. And um, I hope that you leave it the way it is or abolish it altogether. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Solomon? Thank you. Uh, next is uh, Mr. Doug Trimble. Uh, Doug Trimble, Yellow Cab. Uh, as Mr. Solomon and, and Mr. Burroughs has already said, you, you know, the times are changing. 
We hope the old days will come back. I don't believe they will, but we are trying to adapt our business, uh, you know, to go along with the changes in the industry and, and you know, follow the rules and, and the regulations of, of the people who govern our business. And we're, com and we're doing this while we are competing with other forms of tra transportation that, that does not fall under the heading of this, uh, you know, that are unregulated. That, that is very hard to do. But we're trying to rise to the challenge. This, this rule is, was suspended two years ago by the wisdom before me. Don't know why it came back up. As far as I know, it has never been used or invoked, has it, Billy? It's never been? It's been many years since it was. Uh, we have hopes of filling our positions, our permits, so to speak, our empty slots at our cab companies by adapting to the times, drawing more drivers into our business. And we're paying for our permits, and we hope to fill them. We're doing the best that we can do. Uh, as I said, I don't know why this came back up. It was suspended for two years. Uh, it needs to be done away with. If any uh, other companies in our business that fall under, uh, you know, the governorship of, of Mr. Fields' office and, and this, you know, if they want any extra permits, let them apply once a year like that they have the option to do. Uh, basically, everything that's been said before, you know, with my, with my peers, I don't want to re repeat and repeat and repeat, but we pay for these permits and we have hopes of filling them. We have hopes of getting drivers into our industry and our business and at our and our companies, you know. And, and if we if we lose our permits and our open permits, our slots, so to speak, and we don't have them there when we need them, when we have five drivers wanting to come in Yellow Cab or Taxi USA or, or or Pink Cab or, you know, this this is it's going to be devastating to us. But this rule needs to be done away with. It's just it's just totally unreasonable. It, it was uh, suspended two years ago, which that was great. It's something we should not have to worry about. Thank right. you. Thank you, Mr. Trim. Any questions for Mr. Trimble? All right, Mr. Tadelli, Solomon Tadelli. I just uh, a little bit different from what was told. Uh, I, I work, like I told you, I work for Nashville Escape, and we are the only company in Nashville up to now that's almost 98 percent full, and we cannot have any more room. That's the reason why we applied last year, and most of the cup companies refused us not getting any extra. It would have been left for the commissioners to decide. We applied for extra spots. We were denied. Do to those permits sitting in their table, in their office, in every corner you go, in every company you go, there are more than 50, 60% of their spots open. We didn't ask for them to return to the, that's the city decision to do, the commissioner's decision. We are not telling you guys what to do your jobs. You know what to do. But what we are asking you is give us a room to grow. That's all, thank you. Thank you. Next is uh, Mr. Ahmed Abakar. Next is uh, Mr. Mahari Woldekdan. Okay. Uh, thanks for the opportunity again. Uh, I came here to speak before you on uh, Rule 3. Uh, I think Mr. Solomon Tadella has just mentioned uh, just a portion of it. Uh, I know the industry is right now uh, in a hard time. Uh, all this, you know, cab companies are facing uh, driver, you know, shortages. In uh, when the rules have been placed, uh, it's been maybe a few years back, and at the time, uh, there wasn't that many companies. There, weren't, there wasn't any shortage of drivers. Uh, so permits were given based on need uh, of a necessity. 
uh, and everybody has been issued, uh, including Las Vegas, which is, uh, I think, three years now, uh, which we thank you greatly. But uh, this is what I call a cash 22. Uh, the companies today cannot f uh, fill their spots. They don't want to surrender the extra permits. But at the same time, when some companies wanted to grow and need additional permits, they oppose. Uh, it shouldn't work that way. So all we are looking is at a fairness. Uh, first of all, the ordinance are put in a place for a reason. The reason is that anyone that cannot operate uh, with a 10% rule that is vacant, they are supposed to surrender the extra permits that they are not fulfilling. And the ordinance has been suspended for two years, uh, since 2015. And uh, what are we seeing today? Is there any hope for them f filling it? Okay, let's not take away their permits, but when somebody else is growing up here needing additional permits, the commission is not allowing it. So, you know, we cannot be hit twice. You know, there are, you know, in fact, last year, if I recall, so many of these companies were not paying for the extra permits. And then they started paying later on. They hold the numbers, but they were not paying for it. Now I'm hearing that they are paying, which is, which is a great thing, which guarantees at least the permits to stay in their companies. So, uh, what needs to happen is drivers are moving around. Yes, they are moving around because they get a better deal in one company versus the other. It's the nature of the business. So if they have this open spots that they are keeping and hoping someday, which we've been hearing earlier, you know, like Section 50, for example, is not a non-issue to me. I don't want you to go back to that. But how many of drivers are in training that are waiting to get the permit that is becoming an issue. There aren't that many. It's been over two years that has not been filled out and now becoming an issue because we cannot fill out our, you know, our positions because the drivers are not getting their permits on time. So the argument, you know, either it has to be scrapped off from the ordinance where there's no requirement. Everyone that has the permit can keep their permits so long as they can afford to pay and uh, you know, fulfill the requirements, or it should be applied. So the suspension should be considered. You know, it should not be suspended indefinitely. So the commission should consider to eliminate it. Whoever has the permit can keep, or else then it shouldn't be on the ordinance. So this is very important for us, Las Vegas, we had an opportunity to grow. Last year, our permit was denied because there were so many opposition fearing that, oh, they're gonna take the drivers from our companies. They're not gonna bring in new drivers in, in other reasons as well. So what I suggest is, again, you know, the commission to consider to scrap it or enforce it, not suspend it. Thank you. Thank you. Any I questions? Have a question. uh, yes. I was not able to be here last month, but in reading the minutes from last month's meeting, which was the, the meeting for um, certificates of public convenience and necessity, mm -hmm. that nobody applied for any. Yeah, we didn't apply this year. Well, I'm not understanding what you're saying that there that you can't grow because you didn't apply. No, we, this year we did not apply because look, it's the same rule. No, we no, have no, to pay. What, what everybody else has has nothing to do with you applying. No, for new no. Ones. What I'm saying is we applied last year. And there that was, was last year. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We applied last year for last year, and our application was hold was held like for three or four months because there were other issues until they clarify, which is this rule three, whether to suspend it 
uh, or give us a new permit or get, you know, or take away from them and give it to us. That did not happen. So we gave up. We get, because what, what did change? They have the same thing that they had the issues of not fulfilling their permits. Right. And we cannot grow it because this is the I, same I opposition is standing today Here's as well. what I think I want you to understand, and you can correct me, Mr. Field, if I'm wrong. That discussion was basically to say maybe we will do this last year, but it had nothing to do with going forward with what you could do this year. Yeah, we did not apply this year, knowing that this would be the same result no, that no, we no. get. No, it's not the same result. That, was, that was a separate discussion about how we were going to apply Rule 3, not no. about you. No, there, were, there were two issues, if, 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 uh, if, I, if I recalled it correctly. The issue was we applied for new permits, additional permits, and then the commission decided they were not going to add new permits. And then uh, there was a motion that was uh, passed that maybe we should look at the extra permits that the other companies are not filling. Right. So that issue was suspended until three or four months later, which it was reviewed in later the night. So that's how we finished that. So Billy, are there only so many permits that are allowed? No, no, no. no. In, in, in my, I think I'm correct, and those are two separate issues. Right. We were looking at potentially trying to do that, Yes. And we didn't. But yes. it doesn't mean that you can't apply every year for... Oh, definitely. It doesn't and, mean... And Rule 3 would not apply no, this time. No, I that agree was the with discussion you. last year. I okay. agree with you, but right. we did not apply this okay. year. Yeah, we All didn't. Right. But I wanted to make the case, again, you know, this suspension issue should not be indefinite. It's been suspended for two years. Either we have to scrap it from the ordinance, it's no longer a law, or... Okay. You know, any more enforce it. Any more questions for Mr. Wollacadan? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Is there anyone else wishing to speak? On uh, has anyone else signed up, Lisa? No. There is someone that raised their hand. Yes, sir. Please approach the. And since we've called everyone else's name because we knew them, <laughs> actually you get to say your name. All right. I am Adrinya from Volunteer Taxi Cup. Thank you, commissioners, to give me the opportunity. I guess uh, Mr. Doug and others have already explained the situation or the scenarios we have in different companies. We've got Volunteer Taxi has got 80 spots, out of which 73 already uh, completed, already uh, uh, rented, uh, whatever is occupied. And the remaining, because of the existing problem, so many drivers will apply and they take their time to process or to finish their, uh, to get their permits. So I guess the ordinance has set up this program or it has been there for a long time. And the period we are already given, the 30 days, and uh, retaining the, the, the percent or the 10 percent should stay the way it is. We recommend and we have been using it and we have been struggling to fulfill our spot which we are working on it and if we are interested if the commission is still uh, give us permit we are also looking for additional permits. I guess it's not, it's just the issue of one company who is interested uh, to get more, more spots by taking or by pulling from the other companies. We are entitled to apply for a new spots. If the commission gives us that entitlement, we are always ready to apply to increase our numbers. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much, sir. At this point, we will close the public hearing for the consideration of taxi cab rule number three. Uh, I have a question of legal. Are we in the same qualm with this that it really has, would have to be passed by uh, Metro? Or can, if we want, we can abolish the rule? So uh, let me talk a little bit about the kind of the code requirements that kind of um, uh, 
surround this issue, mm -hmm. I guess. Um, uh, the first one that comes to mind for me is 672060, which is the prerequisite finding that you all are asked to make before issuing any cer new certificates of convenience and necessity. Um, and traditionally, we have applied that to um, applications for additional permits for existing certificate holders as well. And that finding is that Metropolitan Licensing Commission finds that further or additional taxicab service in the metropolitan government area is required by the public convenience and necessity. <coughs> so, um, Mr. Fields can correct me if I'm remembering this incorrectly, but um, I believe the year before, I guess, would it be January 2016, um, was maybe the last time someone did apply right. for new um, or additional permits. And, um, uh, you know, so at that time, the commission first undertook to make that finding of whether there was, in fact, a need for additional permits um, under the public necessity and convenience standard. And I believe heard testimony on that issue. And so that, that is what, and this year, as, as um, you know, Commissioner Wallen pointed out, there, was, there were not any. Um, uh, it's possible that they did feel like there wouldn't be a finding, a prerequisite finding um, that, that would uh, have allowed them to apply. Um, but I, I think that the fact that there are already so many outstanding permits that are unfilled um, kind of made it challenging for the commission last year to find that there were there was an additional need for more I, and I think one of one of the things I'm asking is uh, I, if, if I if memory serves me correctly we suspended it because we weren't able to literally change it or abolish it at that point in time two years ago Kind of the same thing with rule I, 15. I think you could abolish, you can abolish the rule. The rule is, is so not. it's different than 15? Yes. Um, okay. that's, there, that's there's really nothing in the code that really speaks to this issue other than the prerequisite finding right. um, that you can't issue new permits unless you can find that there is a need for them. Um, but the, I mean, the rule itself is not, I don't think it's um, really, um, Basically, your rulemaking ability, um, where the code is silent as to something and you're kind of filling in a blank or clarifying something that's ambiguous, you know, th there you have rulemaking authority. If the code explicitly speaks to something, you can't make a rule that's different from what the code speaks okay. to. Um, and I don't think the code speaks to rule three. I think that's why the commission was able to adopt it in the first place. Um, so, but you couldn't do anything, that, like you couldn't issue, you can't um, take away the prerequisite finding requirement in, in order to issue new permits because that actually is in the code. Well, I'd say since we were able to suspend it, there probably is nothing inconsistent in the code with it. So. I agree. Well, times have changed because when I came on this commission, uh, it was very competitive to get uh, permits. Uh, people were coming in showing convenience and, and public necessity. I think I was one of the first meetings I came to was when you were demonstrating the, the public necessity, and it was very competitive to get these permits. Today, or this year, for the first time, no one applied at all for uh, additional permits would suggest to me that there just obviously wasn't a need. However, people have invested a lot of money in holding on to the permits that they not, have not been able to fill. And I have heard that there's a company need for flexibility of keeping some permits, keeping permits that they're not filling in order to, uh, to be able to adjust to the ebbs and flows of drivers coming and going. And it does sound like most of the time it's drivers going from one company to the other rather than new ones coming in, which that may change. So with that ebb and flows, I can understand why you need to hold on to some permits that may not be filled. And if they're willing to keep paying for them, it seems like a nice revenue flow. So would we be more in inclined to, uh, to 
suspend again or try to eliminate? I mean, there's always two schools. I've, I've of never, yeah, I've they, never been one in favor of letting something sit too long in suspension, right. and would be in favor of abolishing it or rescinding <laughs> Rule Three. And if it was ever seen to be need again, if the if there was a change again in the uh, climate of taxi drivers and permit, you know, filling permits, then we could we could always um, uh, pass a new rule. Yeah. I would, yeah, with the chair's permission, remind all the companies they have by by a ruling of the commission, not a rule established. All companies may have as much as 10% above the number they're assigned by this commission to be ADA accessible for taxi cabs. Mm -hmm. So if a company has 100 permits, they may have 115. If those additional 15, those 15 will not count against the number they're assigned. That was done in, an, in a great desire to have more ADA taxi cabs, mm -hmm. which is something very near and dear to my heart and been near and dear to this commission's heart. So I would encourage all of the companies to put on a, another, if they've got if they've got flexibility, I would encourage them to add ADA. as many cabs as possible in ADA. They are expensive, and I understand the arguments why they do not. But they are very necessary, necessary enough that the commission doesn't count it against your cab. Mr. Fields, do you see any harm in rescinding Rule 3 and letting the taxi companies hold on to permits that are not filled in this day and time? My first experience with the Transportation Licensing Commission was the Taxi Cab Record Board in 1988. Uh, at that time, rules existed. Well, I have to be the old man in the room. Uh, the, the rules were, were there because the, it was very competitive. There was not a year that every person that was in the business wanted more cabs. Um, the, the first commission meeting I came back to in 2012 after my hiatus out in Metro Government uh, there were applications everywhere. There was a time that I was by far the most popular regulator in the country because I was open to new companies coming into business. Three years ago, these companies that are new on the list, and I could go through them if you like, didn't exist. Four years, they didn't mm -hmm. exist. The fact that there, there are companies today that exist, we did open the market, we did provide opportunity. Sometimes members are short, and I'm, and I'm sorry for that. But I, it, it, I, what happened, what has happened is what, Again, I said what happened. We will have a great migration from company to company, including some drivers that change. Let me make sure I'm not exaggerating. Six or seven times a year, eight times a year, where their permits are changed nearly every month because they're chasing a better deal. I absolutely agree with the people that spoke that we, we meet and talk. I understand. If I can get something cheaper at one store, I'm going to go to the store and buy it. But it doesn't grow the business. I would be very open. If somebody can come and say, I'm going to bring in new cabs and new people, I think that's great. We all want more people. There's no question. But just moving around, I mean, it's just ebb and flow, and some companies are, well, this week, I think uh, Jim said he put on four in two days. That's great. I hope he can put on four every day for the next however long it takes to fill his numbers. I want them all to, because I think the service our cab drivers provide and our cab companies provide is by far superior to anybody else's, one, I think, in the country. I think we're as good as anybody. We're certainly better than transportation network companies as I'm concerned, because of the fact of what they do to put their people on the street and what we help them with. So any problems with uh, cab companies having more permits not filled than what rule, rule 3 provides for? The commission determined that we could have as many as 1,324 cabs on the street mm -hmm. and an additional 132. So about over 1,400, about 1,450 cabs could be on the street to prove the necessity. Taking them for day will, you know, either there's not a need today. I'm not sure what we'd really get if you put three back in other than we'll just have movement in the companies. Mm -hmm. I don't think we're going to create any new ones. I wish it would. Abolishing it. People, you know, again, that's the reason you have an annual meeting. People can apply. This commission has certainly, you in three years, you've nearly tripled the number of cabs that could be on the street in Davidson mm -hmm. County, more than doubled it. And there's nearly double what we had when uh, it when you started taking action in 2012. You have a history of putting cabs on the street. Till this year. Sir? Till this year. Till this year. Mm -hmm. So we can, uh, our choices really, Terry, are to... Uh, to maintain the status quo, to reinstate, or to rescind? Yes. Commissioners? Uh, <clears throat> any more discussion? 
Okay, well, I just want to make sure that I'm understanding it currently. <coughs> the reason nobody was granted new permits last year was because there was not a necessity based on the research or study that you all did. Actually, I'm the newbie, I'm just trying to <laughs> get caught up. In, in order for a company to either get additional taxi cabs or to, yeah. uh, uh, or, or new company companies, this they have it's all it's bound it, it's entirely on the company to prove that there's a public necessity, uh, okay. and that has to be proven. If the commission is not satisfied that it's been proven, then they don't have to take action. If they do agree, then they have the next step is to determine how many should go on the street. Okay. So it's two different sections. One is there a need, and then and how many? How many? Okay. And last year it was found not to be a, a need or public convenience. That's correct. So if they had applied this year, they would have also had to have brought forth the reasoning why. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Uh, I, I would make a motion to rescind uh, taxi cab rule number three, retentions of taxi cab permits. We have a motion to rescind uh, rule three. Is there a second? I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Rule three is rescinded. I have a question. Can I ask a question? Can I ask a question? Um, sure. Five seconds. My question is, in the ordinance, uh, there is uh, where it says there is a mi any cab company should have a minimum cab on the road. Is that going to be affected or not? Well, rule three is rescinded. It's, it's rescinded. It's, okay, now it I'm just, no longer just checking. Okay. No longer exists. Okay. Right. There is also a provision that is in the code mm -hmm. that this commission doesn't have the authority to change. Um, that says that all certificate holders must have a minimum of 15 vehicles in operation. Okay. 15. 15, yes. And I'm, I'm just checking because in the rule three, you know, even though it's rescinded now, uh, there is where it says uh, if they have only 10 or less, they should have one cab yeah, on the that, road. That, that is inconsistent yeah. with the um, yeah, with the code. So that part of the rule is really obsolete and should be deleted right. anyway. Okay, I'm just just checking. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Next item on the agenda is uh, application for booting permit, Mr. Fields. Um, Ms. Shouse. Saren. Shouse. Sarah Schaus is not present. Uh, the, we had a conversation. One of the things that the commission has had, uh, and certainly you're right to deny, defer, or take no action at all. Uh, we've deferred several, and sometimes they, they don't come back. One of the things we were thinking as a staff, one of the reasons we've done that is so they wouldn't have to pay again. Would it be permissible to, uh, if you if you chose to deny, what we would do is, is if they showed up prior to the setting of the next agenda, allow them to enter that agenda without reapplying? In other words, just basically rescind or, or deny it, and then if they don't come in, then it stays denied. Can we do something like that? I'm sorry. Well, the meeting, the, rule, the decisions we make are not final till we approve the minutes Correct. in the Correct. next meeting. Correct. So I don't see why you wouldn't be able to consider it sort of yeah. in abeyance and let them come back I mean the, the things that you can do with a motion you can yeah. um, once a motion has passed within the same meeting you mm -hmm. can reconsider that motion um, after the meeting has adjourned you can no longer do a motion to reconsider but you can do a motion to amend or an a motion to rescind um, there are some additional requirements under Robert's rules. I think they either have to pass by a two-thirds majority or have been sp explicitly noticed in the agenda for the meeting. Well, what we were, so, yeah. again, what we were trying to do was we, we don't want to collect any more money because we've already done the research we need to do. We certainly, uh, she's not present today. I'm not sure why she's not present. She received the notice. I'm, we're happy for this, this application to go forward. By, by deferring it, we're going to add it to the next month's agenda. If it were denied with, with the understanding from the commission that if she appears prior to the next meeting to say I, there was a, I had, 
this happened, I want to be on the next agenda, then we just take the same application and roll it to the next agenda. If she fails to come in, then she fails to come in and it would be denied at the next, it would just stay denied at the I'm next meeting. I'm not entirely meeting. sure I'm following. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. so is that different than just deferring it? Basically, we were trying to help them. I mean, frankly, from my perspective, if mm -hmm. you ask for staff opinion, I think all permits should be denied if they fail to appear. They're, they've asked, we've not summoned them in, they fail to show up, it's not our fault. Yeah. And it, it takes more staff time, it also takes more of your time. So from my perspective, I'd be happy if you denied everybody that didn't show up. However, there are occasions where people show, can't show up for a reason. I, we've had them in hospitals. We've actually had them bring in their hospital discharge <laughs> papers. Uh, I actually had a driver once that was couldn't get out of Egypt. So yeah. it, uh, it clearly is possible. We were just looking for a solution short of having to have a second hearing on it. So I'm sorry. So in saying, other words, basically we deny, deny, be? deny it, and if they fail to it, deny it with the understanding mm -hmm. is if they appear prior to setting the next agenda, which is 15 days before the next meeting, then we, we would have the right, the commission would give us authority to place mm -hmm. them on the next one even though you denied it. And at the worst, we would Wouldn't have that to. Just be you rescinding, them rescinding what they did. Pretty before? much, I would just again, we're looking for a more automatic way just yeah. to take it forward rather than deferral. We can leave it with deferral again. We, that's it achieves the same sort of thing, except we have lately we've had drivers that just don't come back. And then we have to put them on the agenda, right. and go from a deferral to a denial if they don't show up the second Correct. time. So what you're asking is if we do, if they don't call I'm, in with I'm not sure our lawyer would think we should or could. So well, it sounds like you can defer or you can rescind a denial. You can do either. Yeah, one of those we could things. we could then at the next meeting make a motion to rescind the previous denial. Okay. So what we could do then yeah. is if you deny today, by your if they appear prior to the setting of the next agenda, I could you, you would put them on you the would agenda. ask me to place that on the agenda mm -hmm. for their consideration. And if they don't come back, then they're just denied. Correct. In other words, I could ask. I could ask. Unless they appeal, to receive. they can appeal yeah. as well. Correct. Yeah. But there's that thing that works. So then, then, then you have to pay again. Okay. If they deny. But that, that makes sense then. Not make a motion to deny. If it's a new application, they would have to. Pay <laughs> we could practice again. on this. That's denied. Just. Rem but I, I guess if if staff makes a recommendation to you all that you rescind your prior yeah. denial, yeah. then I don't think they would have to. That would be considered a new application, and I don't think they would have to. Pay well, we're it. trying to avoid. I don't want to keep taking people's money for because right. what's going to happen is we're going to if we deny, she stays denied. We're going to run another background check. She's going to pay another seventy-five dollars or forty dollars, depending on which kind of a. You know, if it's a, a depending on what right. kind of background we're doing, um, so uh, we're good. If I we guess can, I'm not sure what you mean when you say if she comes back in. In other words, if she still is interested in being a driver. Oh, I see. Okay. If she calls up, say, in a week from now and says, "Hey, I was at the hospital. I'm sorry, I missed. I couldn't get a phone call into the office." You know, so. Yeah. And we would just if they if they if they still have interest. You know, we're not going to choose is it a good excuse or a bad excuse? Did the doctor sign it? Did you get a note from home? Yeah. What we would do is just by, I would just, we'd, we'd staff would come back with a request to receive so and I'm, consider. So I'm Ms. Schaus. She was set on the agenda today. We haven't heard anything from her. Mm -hmm. I would make a motion to deny. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Mm -hmm. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Application denied. We have an application for a low speed low speed vehicle from uh, Mr. Matthew Grow. Mr. Grow, are you present? There he is. Mr. Fields. Mr. Grow's application, when you look at it, it's it is considerable. It was especially he actually has provided more information that I could actually find through our background check, and it was such so large. I wanted to make sure that. It, again, it's the same as we do on everybody. Anytime we get to this length, we're going to ask the commission to look at it. There are no there are no direct disqualifiers from the standpoint of felonies. There's just he's been very active. Definitely honest. But he has a client. He has a representative from the company here is present with him. <laughs> I'm his wife. My name's Harmony. That um, makes if her you'd love part of the company. Here. So. <laughs> I don't know if y'all recall, but I had been back here in August, and it was uh, the part of the stipulation was come back in six months. So uh, that's why I'm here today. Can you refresh us on that, Mr. Yeah, again, he was here present and needed uh, needed a reappearance in front of you. Anytime there's 
again, when you ask to see Rip here and he's yep. Rip here, we've not had any issues with him. Uh, we just just wanted to make sure that you're aware. Again, there's not been any issues that I'm aware of. He's not come to have to visit me, I don't think. It's like 18 yes, misdemeanors of different types, huh? There, wait, just sorry, the, the, the length. There was nothing that would disqualify it. No, so, the same was he issued a permit before. Yes. No. That is correct. No, 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 no it's no, not. No, I'm sorry. Not I'm sorry. Okay. No. Never did. I was getting confused. I'm sorry. But we have about 18 misdemeanors, no mm -hmm. felonies. A lot of intoxication charges, though. Yes, sir. DUIs. So how are we going to know you're not going to be peddling and drinking? Well, you have my word, and I mean, I'm happy to do whatever is necessary to, you know, ensure that, you know, that that won't happen. So because that's my May biggest I speak concern. On his for behalf? The, well, it's just my biggest concern is the safety of the public. Oh, mine as well, sir. Because you got a long history of alcohol-related offenses. Correct. Yes, sir. May I be allowed to speak on his behalf in in the matter of of his drinking? Because I am the person that's pretty much closest to him and ha I haven't known all his previous issues as a you know in his 20s but since I've been with him in a relationship and married him um, he did have a previous lengthy time of alcoholism that runs in his family um, and it's something he's worked on as an adult um, I've seen significant improvements he has not especially since um, we've been married and probably when we first got engaged. It's something that he's increasingly worked on. And I would say definitely in the last year and a half, he has rarely drank. And then definitely since the last hearing of this, he has not been to have one drink. He's gone to counseling. He's done all the appropriate measures because it is something that he deals with. Everybody deals with something that's hard for them to you know, recoup or handle. And he's made significant changes. And his alcohol issues that he's had in the past aren't who he is. Um, he's never had an issue um, since the DUI um, five, six years ago before I met you. Yeah. Um, since then, he hasn't had you know any run-ins as far as vehicle operation. He's done all the appropriate things to get his physical license back to drive on the road as you know a normal citizen and. Um, he has never had, in my knowledge, or any, uh, had an issue work-related with alcohol either. And he has worked in downtown environments. He's been a bartender. He's been a bouncer. He's currently has a second job as a bouncer. He's never had, um, especially work-related alcohol issues ever. Um, it was more personal things in the past um, that related to those issues. Thank you. Any questions? Well, since you're vouching for him. And say you know personal how long y'all been married? Um, we've been married for a year and a half. We've been together for about five. Are you in a program currently? He's not in a 12 step no, program, sir. but he is in like uh, a normal counseling session um, bi weekly with a counselor. So, Great counselor. yes, um, through Lipscomb University. So, Anything else? commissioners. I'll make a motion to approve the application. Uh, we have a motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any uh, additional discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? We appreciate it. Thank, approved. You. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you. No. Stay in the program. Okay. Yes, Definitely. Sir. I'm keeping them on track. No worries. Thank you. We have uh, three driver applications for taxi cabs, Mr. Fields. Abdullah Hussein. Abdullah Hussein. I'm sorry, Abdullah Hai Hussein. I left off the line, I mispronounced. He was deferred from the January meeting. Uh, motion to deny. Motion to deny. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Next, Mr. Fields. Elias. Mr. Jama, are you present? Yes. And Mr. Fields, do you have background on Mr. Jama? I'm working through Mr. Hussein. Um, Mr. Jama has uh, 
you Ruby, wants to go to work for Magic Taxi. Do you have a representative for Magic Taxi? Uh, I have uh, Bink. I've been, I've been working with Bink for a year, 2014. And uh, and some charges in 2015, uh, had battery, reckless conduct, things that would not necessarily disqualify him. However, uh, charges that had he been found uh, <coughs> guilty would have. Okay. Mr. Uh, we also, if you look at Mr. Jama's record, he has some charges in uh, in Chicago that we that he's actually on a supervised probation for misdemeanors, which was not a disqualifier, but wanted to make sure that uh, he will stay on probation until 2018 in Illinois, I suspect. Has that been transferred here? Yeah, yeah. I've been transferred here, <laughs> yes. What are you on probation for in Illinois now? Ah, uh, battery, battery. What was it? Battery. 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 2015. 2015. Were all these charges um, based on one incident or multiple incidents? Uh, multiple incidents, but I, ha I, I had been uh, convicted only one of it, which is. Uh, Drinking in the public. That's the only thing I have been convicted with. It. Mr. Jama, one of your conditions of probation was to get a mental health evaluation and treatment if recommended. Yes. What was the outcome of the mental health evaluation? It's good now. I'm taking my medication. I'm, I also have a family. I have three kids. Why were you required to get a mental health evaluation? Uh, because Back in 2002, I had been diagnosed with schizoaffective, schizoaffective disorder. Mm -hmm. But I've been driving for eight years. Taxi, I drive for, uh, I was driving with uh, um, United. I never had a trouble with it. I was good. But 2015, somehow I had a trouble. Mm -hmm. When was the mental health evaluation completed? Uh, it had been completed uh, four months ago four to six, six back in uh back in july of 2016 2016 yes do you have that with you today i don't have with me but i go i still go to center storm and i go once a month i see my psychiatrist once a month mm -hmm. but it's not a new thing i had for maybe almost 13 years mm -hmm. and i was doing good it had been controlled mm -hmm. i've been married i had a children but some, something happened to me in 2015. So it resurfaced. The yeah. condition resurfaced. The, the condition is good, yeah. <clears throat> Did that I'm not, I'm, I mean, I'm not a criminal, but I just had a little bit issue with my medication because I've been taking one medication for so long, for, for a long time. And then that's when I had a trouble with it. You know, I just had my medication put me in a little trouble. But they, my doctor changed my medication. I'm taking new medication right now. And this was in Chicago? This was in Chicago, yes. And when you were going through that change in the medication and your mental illness I came back to Nashville, Tennessee, my home oh, in Nashville, yeah. When you went through the change of the medication and your mental illness resurfaced, is that when you got the criminal charges in Chicago? No. No? No, I mean, I had a, I had a while I was a little bit sick. But I was not driving a taxi. I was in Chicago, and I had a trouble because my medication caused me a little bit trouble. Mm -hmm. Who did you assault in Chicago? Uh, assault, no, I assaulted a heart in Nashville, which, which, is, uh, which I was not convicted. It had been dismissed. That was my mother. The, the, the conviction in Chicago yeah. that you were placed on probation Yeah. that was transferred to Tennessee. Can I see Mr. Maynard, yeah. All right. That conviction in Chicago was for battery, right? Yes. Who, did, who are you? Who did they say you assaulted or battered? Uh, that was a woman. She said that I touched her, but I, I mean, I didn't actually. I was on the street. Was it a, a cab, a passenger or something? No, it, it, it has nothing to do with my job. I was walking on the street. And she said you touched her? She said I touched her, but I did not touch her. That's why I had a course of in, in a private area? That was on the street. Yeah. Public so she said you touched her in a touch her, private yes. area, an inappropriate area. 
What is that? Can you repeat it, please? In an area that would be offensive. That's what she said, but I did okay. not touch her. Did you plead guilty? No, I had a deal. They tell me if uh, if you we're gonna we're gonna send you to uh, course of provision. After that, I will be able to uh, this. The case will be dismissed on uh, 2018. It will be dismissed, so it will be out of my record. Mm -hmm. I had a deal. You had a deal. I had a deal. Yes, and that's why. Played, I, and then you played guilty. I believe I play, I played guilty because I had a deal. I did for for the deal. But you were denying that you did anything wrong. I uh, know. I I did not touch her. Did you know the lady? I did not know her. So it was a stranger. Stranger, yes. Who accused you of inappropriately yes, touching? Yes, she accused her. me. Yes, I did not touch her. Thank you. Okay, thank you so oh, you much. Know, I, I wouldn't leave yet. Okay. There may be other questions. Okay. Were there any medication issues when you were when this happened? Because I'm just looking at the dates. Yeah. It looks like the first arrest would have been on August second. Uh, uh -huh. Then the next arrest would have been on uh, August the eleventh. Yes. Then the next one would have been on August the twelfth, and then the last one August seventeenth. So for about ten days. Ten was days. That with, they'd ask the question. I wasn't sure you understood it. Yeah. Was that when they changed your medicine? No, they changed it after when I come back to okay, Nashville. Okay, so the problem was going on. This for, happened. This you happened. Went back in for treatment. And for, I got I got back for treatment. Right. Yes, in Nashville, Tennessee. Right. For some reason, though, the Chicago judge decided you needed a mental health evaluation as a part of your conditions of probation in Chicago. Yes. And you didn't get that mental health evaluation until July of 2016. Yes. And was that in Chicago or in Nashville? In Nashville. All right. When did you move back to Nashville? I came back to Nashville back in, I think, I think October 2015. October or November. Okay. And we do have a representative from Magic? No, Bink. <clears throat> oh, so you're going to go to work for Pink yeah, instead Bink, of Magic? Yeah. yeah. Okay. He drove for me once before. I never had any issues with him. He drove both. Okay. And if, if he were to be given a permit here, you're good with, uh, with hiring him? Okay. Say so you, you would restrict him for six months? I said if he restricted to me, I'll, I'll buy him a car or I'll find him a car driver. Okay. I'll make an investment in him if you give him a permit. Well, I'll make a motion to conditionally approve upon Mr. Jama bringing to Mr. Fields the mental health evaluation to allow Mr. Fields to review that and then if he feels necessary to put it back on the agenda if not uh, then the uh, then for the permit to be with the condition to be removed you want to restrict it to uh, pink cap and I would I would restrict it to six months with pink cap yes, sir. yes. we have a motion is there a second a second we have a motion and a second is there any further discussion all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Mr. Most, no, go ahead. The motion carries. Mr. Jama, you're required to bring uh, your evaluation to Mr. Fields. Uh, <coughs> and, uh, upon his review, um, a su uh, successful review, you would be granted a permit uh, with for pink tax. So I have to talk to my doctor, then bring the papers from my doctor, right? To Mr. Fields, yes. At the commission. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Next on the agenda is. Good luck. Hmm. Hello, are you present? It's okay. Yes. Come forward. <laughs> hey, it was so easy. <laughs> I wanted to say something very out. close to that. You were close. <laughs> and his initial application was uh, denied October 2016. He was eligible when when denied. You you have to wait 90 days uh, before you can reappear in front of the commission. So he has waited the 90 days and has reappeared to uh, for you. Uh, 
you have the application and there are a couple of other additional accidents that we have reports on he did not apparently receive any citations for either of those accidents no, And the reason we denied Mr. Fields, did he fail to show? It was, he, he was present. I think the issues were, if he had an extensive, had some driving issues that uh, got him in front of me. Okay. He also had been convicted of a reckless endangerment back in September of 2015. That was a class A misdemeanor. So your application shows that you uh, will be employed by Yellow Cab, correct? Yes. Sir. And it looks like Mr. Trimble is gone. Is there anyone else from Yellow Cab who can vouch for that? Uh, no, sir. You know, that's one of the conditions that we have is that somebody is here from the company you're going to be working for. Did he know that you were going to? Uh, no, sir. He doesn't know that you're going to be working for him? Well, he knows. I, I, I'm working with uh, some other, uh, other people, rent their cars and drive as a taxi driver. I've been driving for 14 years in this city, sir. Mm -hmm. I never got no problem unless that problem that, that they reject my uh, re my family. I understand, but I want to make, make sure you understand that there are specific rules that we have in terms of granting permits. And one of those is that somebody is here to say, yes, this person is going to work for me. We can't just arbitrarily give out driver permits without you having a job somewhere. Well, uh this suspension has put me into a lot of problems, sir. This suspension has put me into a problem that uh, my house is going to foreclosure now. <coughs> and then uh, I never beg for food. I, I understand all of that, sir. Let me, let me try to give you so you can understand. Somebody can tell me that it's okay for me to do something, have a, have a license to do something, but if I don't have somewhere to go do it, and I'm not, it, that's hard to really, for us to, to understand where you're working and who you're working for. So you wrote Yellow Cab, I'm, I'm just asking you, did they really say that they were going to hire you? Yes, sir. I got uh, this guy's number. Uh, Did, is it possible you spoke with Marvin at Yellow Cab? Uh, not Marvin, sir. This uh, uh, Elian. Okay, he is one of the. He's one of the. Uh, he owns multiple cabs at Yellow Cab. Exactly. And he he doesn't have hiring authority at Yellow. He certainly has a relationship with him. Before we issue any permit. Regardless of once you approve it, before we would issue the permit to them, they have to bring in proof, a signed document from the company, showing that they they have uh, they have the right to drive under their colors. So we we wouldn't issue anything unless Yellow or one of the other companies has signed off on it. I understand. I think this, if I remember correctly, this was part of the problem we had the last time because there was nobody who was. I don't have the minutes. I apologize. Yeah, for that's I okay. The minutes. It's okay. Yeah, I'm not recalling it either. I don't have any more questions. What did we tell you to do in October before coming back here? Uh, I can't recollect sir, that, that, that month. Sir. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I think it's October. That's the time to suspend my, my permit. So you recall in October your permit was suspended? Yes, sir. Is, again, I, I should have brought the minute book. Uh, my, my
my record indicates that it, we denied his permit, mm -hmm. which meant he could come back after 90 days. Right. I suspect it was, again, it would have been the driver issue just from um, accidents and things like that, and you had a concern about him being behind the wheel. And he, if he were granted a permit, he's within he's within a ticket, a, a moving violation of having it taken Moved. away. So he has to have a perfect drive. In other words, if he if you issue today, and I'm not saying don't issue it, I'm mm -hmm. saying he would have to go out and not commit any more moving violations um, on this current MVR that that I'm looking at. He's right at the max prior to one more, and he would have to quit driving, and the company would need to be monitoring that. He did. Okay. He did. Can Thanks. You ask Doug if he's. <laughs> I'm, get, I'm getting a little nervous with this co cooperation that's going on. No, no, no. <laughs> no. I'm just, I'm just asking if you can ask him if he's intending to hire him. Oh, yeah. I'll take Jim your word. I'll, I'll take your word for that. I think Doug will hire him. I'll always guarantee you. I understand. He can come work for me, but I would never deal with him. I don't want to I'm just saying. We're trying to be helpful to everyone today. <laughs> Listen, we all have the same problem. And that's the I understand. Problem. We're all trying to I understand. He's very slow to respond. Oh, he's calling him on the phone directly. I wasn't going to do that. Doug is on the phone. He says he will. All right. Okay. <laughs> That's also a first. <laughs> Never had that happen before. It's certainly okay. Based on the collective uh, honesty the of uh, intelligence, yeah. Mr. Burrow and Mr. Solomon, and cooperation between the companies. Yes. <laughs> in relaying Mr. Trimble's information. Hmm? Scares me. Um, right, other questions uh, for the applicant? Commissioners, it's up to you. Mr. Fields, what was the, we don't know the reason for a, a initial denial other than the accumulation of points and the and driving record? Yeah, that's what I believe it would have been. I, I, again, I think from, uh, is it, from a staff position, you know, we, we don't have a reason to deny other than he has, he, he is going to have to really watch his driving from a moving violation standpoint. Uh, if you if you approve and, and restrict him to yellow, again, you just did one to pink, uh, then it would be, uh, you know, for six months, then they certainly could, Doug's going to be monitoring at that point. We could, to get a MVR is, is, is $5. We could certainly, during that time period, we could, we could do some random MVR reports if that's what you chose. It says it's, it's he has it, he has to self-report. If he fails to self-report and something's there, then clearly it's reason. I didn't have the authority to re, to Revoke. suspend it and bring it back to you for revocation. Okay. There's no one thing here that precludes him no, from. No. He, okay. The staff would not had he. Very likely, had you not denied him in uh, in uh, uh, last fall, in October, it, he would have. It's possible he would have been approved again. The driving record is something. Okay. Uh, okay. What got him here in October uh, was uh, failure to disclose a reckless endangerment. Then that that caused a hearing to happen. Then you review his driver's record. Okay. So he failed to list that charge. Thank you, Ms. Dale. <laughs> so you were saying that? That would not keep him from being a driver. His failure to disclose uh, what our role is is to, is to look at the number of moving violations. If it's below that number, look at the charges that he's charged, what he's charged with. If he has not been found guilty of any of those charges, he has fewer uh, moving violations than the ordinance, then we're required to issue him the permit. If any of those things are not, then then we would deny. The, then we would. The staff would deny. And there's not an appeal for for not complying with the ordinance. However, uh, staff has the at 
commission's request, anytime there's something that would be a little odd, we bring them from. In this particular case, anytime somebody mm -hmm. fails to disclose, and doesn't matter how long ago it was, this commission's Comes asked in. to see it. So that's what got him here in October. Okay. As I'm looking through your record here, all your moving violations are in Sumner County. Yes, sir, and that was on my uh, private car, sir. So you can't drive your private car, but you can drive a taxi. Well, you don't have, no, I'm just saying you have nothing in Davidson County. It's all in Sumner <laughs> County. <laughs> yes. Well, I live in Sumner County. I understand. <laughs> You may need to move from Sumner County. I'm not sure. <laughs> I think so. Well, I'm <laughs> no, no, I'm not encouraging that. Not. Work more, play less. Well, <laughs> maybe work. That might do it. Mr. Jacquet, have you driven for taxi companies before? Yes, I was owning a car from 1999 on, on uh, Checker Cab up to. Uh, but anyway, I drove for 10 years there. I own a car, never got no problem, never come here before. And then I left, the, I went uh, for a vacation, and then I told them that I'm going for a vacation, I'm going to keep my car. And then they told me that uh, you can sell your car to us, when you come back, you will give you your car and your spot. And then I listened to them, I sold my car to them. And then when I came back after two months, and then I asked them for my car and my spot, they did not give me my car and my spot. And then that's why I started driving for Yellow. So you've been driving for Yellow before? Well, Yellow now, I think is about four years now I've been driving for Yellow. Mm -hmm. Let me make sure I just lay out stairs. Yeah, something's Did you have right. a, No, I think I just figured out what was happening. It wasn't okay. showing here. Did you have a permit up until last September and then fail to renew on time? Because if he failed to renew on time. No, he, I was, uh, uh, I went to uh, apply that time, sir. Okay. After I'd done the, uh, the class, and oh, then I yeah. went there to apply and then they sent me for a fingerprint test, right. and then okay. I done it. And but then he failed to list. Report. By mm -hmm. failing to list, and that got him the trip here. So that's the reason it's a little confusing. He's been a driver, had Up a problem with summer. renewal, okay. renewed, or came in as, because we have to treat him as a new driver, mm -hmm. failed to list, and it wasn't shown on any previous records that we had. So that's what's got him here today. A, a, a long way to get here, but he's here. So he was denied for failure to list. Right. Okay. For what was really a, a attempt to renew his, his yes. permit. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Hmm. And he'd be going back with the same company he was driving with before. Back with yellow. And we can restrict him to yellow if we find the need to. I would make a motion to approve with a one year restriction to yellow cab. I'll second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Thank you, Jenny. And Louis Jacques, you are approved. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. And next, we have other passenger vehicles for hire. Mr. Fields. Uh, we have uh, Five Diamond Transportation, Lucky Nash Limo, Nashville Electric Transportation, and the Limo Company of Nashville. The applications are all in order. All in order. Do you have a motion? Make a motion to approve in bonk. Have a motion? Second. And a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. <laughs> I have driver applications for Mr. Burnett and Mr. Uh, Mengesha. Mm -hmm. Mr. Burnett is present. Mr. Burnett's a longtime resident of Nashville. Uh, he went in, in his office. All 67 years of it. <laughs> I, wasn't gonna, I was not going to go into that far. Uh, unfortunately, when he, when he applied to uh, work for Metro Livery, he left out two charges. Insufficient funds in 1976 and resisting arrest in 1978. He listed the other things were listed. <laughs> Could remember that far back. 
I make a motion to approve. We second. have a motion for approval and a second. Thank you. You're welcome. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Who was the second? Okay. <laughs> motion carries. Next is uh, Mr. Mangesha. Mr. Mangesha has applied to also work for Metro Livery. Uh, he failed to list uh, two charges. Uh, Wade didn't list anything. The t one of the charge, larceny, and there was a conspiracy charge. You have the, that application in front of you. I'm working my way to it. One charge in 2005, trespassing. A charge in 2005, um, two months later for uh, attempt to break and enter, and a charge. Uh, that I, the last the charge, uh, all in the same time period, conspiracy to violate a drug law. Um, I may be missing something, but what I'm looking at on his application, there's n there's nothing listed for um, arrest or conviction. Yeah, he didn't list. It. Yeah, there's nothing listed, but when okay. you pull the record, either are yeah. So yep. it is a fail to list. Failed it is. Okay. Yes. May I respond to that? Is that all right? Um, I was told by my lawyer at that time in 2005 that after 10 years it would be off my record, so I didn't think it was on my record. That's why I failed to list well, it on my, on my application. We've been through this a few times. It says even those that are expunged to list anything, even including those that are expunged. Yeah, I, I was told that it wasn't going to be on my record, so I didn't think it was on my record since it was over 10 years ago. So that's well, we don't have to even it. think about revising this again to say even the ones you think are off your record. I'm, yeah. I could it, certainly add additional yeah. language. We, we actually say that in the office. I, okay. The, 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 this gentleman, I, I've heard. Including. Yeah. And well, yeah, it says I've, including I've expungement. The, the, yeah. Yeah, the, the, window, the window language doesn't change from driver okay. to driver. Well, it's. Uh, but we certainly understand that that happened. I mean, we do know that people are told. Mr. Mingenja, this this application says, including everything that's expunged, anything that was taken off your record, and I'm told that you're also <laughs> informed when you come in for the application to include anything in this, any arrest or convictions, even those that you think are off your record. I wasn't a hundred percent sure in terms of that. I just know that since it was over 10 years ago, I didn't expect it to be on my record. So you thought you all my belief on what, what, what I was told by my lawyer at that time. Yeah, but you knew you were supposed to put it on this application, even if it was off your record. Yeah, to be truthful and honest, I wasn't trying to lie or misguide anybody in terms of my application. I just simply thought, you know, it's been over 10 years. It's my first offense as well, and I thought it wasn't on my record, so I didn't think it would be relevant in terms of putting it down as if, if, if 10 years has passed already. So, Well, it, it does say failure to make a full disclosure as to all arrests will result in the denial of this application for a permit. Yeah, and then I reappealed my application, and that's why I'm here today. So. or three issues from 11 and a half years ago. Mm -hmm. And the failure to list those three issues. And what concerns me is I think you were trying to avoid reporting them, hoping they, thinking they weren't going to show up. Not that you didn't realize it, but that you just thought, well, it won't show up, so I won't report them. I thought it wouldn't show up because I was told that it wasn't going to be on my record after 10 years. I understand so I what you I thought. What I think is that you were hoping we wouldn't catch it and you get by. I wasn't necessarily trying to get by by lying on an application. I just thought it wouldn't be in my record. Well, it, it but is. But it actually is. So. Mm -hmm. 
So and when you come. read that paragraph that said to list all your convictions, arrest and convictions, surely you thought about these things 11 years ago. Yes, but... And decided not to put them down. I decided not to put it down because I thought it wasn't on my record to be simple and frank. And since then, uh, you know, at that time I was only 23, 24 years old. And I was young and made a reckless mistake. And it was my first offense. Now, you know, it's over 10 years, it's 11 and a half years as you guys have mentioned. And I've grown to mature and be more responsible for my actions. I finished my college education. I've been working here uh, as an extra. I actually got my BA in theater arts from Addis Ababa University just recently. Came back from Ethiopia last September. And I've been trying to have an opportunity to work in the limousine service company business because I have some experience. Uh, back in 2008, I was working for USA Limousine Service for about six to eight months. And I enjoyed working for them, and I thought maybe I should give it a shot now that I'm here in Nashville. And I recently just moved to Nashville like six months ago. So I was, that's how, a little is, background somebody, history on myself. Is there somebody from Metro Library? Um, they chose not to show up today, so. But I called the Transportation Licensing Commission office, mm -hmm. and they said you should still show up and represent yourself have the opportunity to be able to get my permit today. Sounds like you've made a lot of changes and improvements over the last 11 years. Yes, sir. What was the facility that you had the attempted break and entry in? It wasn't a facility. It was like a residential area. A house or apartment? or I like apartments, yeah. Okay, so you were charged with attempted in break into an apartment. Lot. I was in the parking lot. Okay. And the conspiracy to violate drug laws? What was the drug? Marijuana. What was the conspiracy about? They found like a little baggie of marijuana on me at that time, so that's what the charge was for. Okay, because you do have a charge of possession of marijuana too. Yeah. It was a total of five charges, mm -hmm. and the last two charges were reduction charges, mm -hmm. so. You got your U.S. citizenship? Yes, sir. Born in Ethiopia, though? Yes, sir. And you got your citizenship? Yeah. When did you do that? 2005. Good. All right. Any more questions for Mr. Not for me. Is there a motion on the? I'll make, make a motion to approve his application. We have a motion to approve. And second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion Thank approved. You. Thank you so much. Thank you. It is on your record. <laughs> <laughs> Better just to list. <laughs> we have uh, wrecker and towing services driver applications. Eric Brooks. Mr. Brooks is present. Mr. Brooks, uh, you yeah, have, have his application in front of you. It is several charges uh, involving uh, handguns and so forth. Nothing that would preclude him from being a, uh, a operating a wrecker. However, wanted to uh, bring it to your attention. <laughs> Look, exposed. <laughs> his last charge that I'm aware of was in 2012. He was found. Uh, it was a weapons charge, misdemeanor. Well, I appreciate your candor at the end of your uh, section. You put this recollection to the best of my ability. If anything was left off, it was not intentional. Sir. Sure. Okay. He fully disclosed the best we can tell. <laughs> so we have a variety of things, possession, a lot of weapon possessions. One. Two, three, four. Can't you get a permit? Not now, bro. I mean, couldn't you? <laughs> I, I had, I had at one point, and um, it was revoked. And one of those was a misunderstanding. 
the other two was, or the other the other three actually, I lived in an area where there was a lot of crime, and I felt I had to carry a weapon to protect myself, and I got caught with it. How'd you get caught with the weapon each time? Well, when, uh, I got pulled over one time and I had it with me. Uh, one time I was, I was walking down the street and got stopped by an officer and I had a gun on me. Well, were you under the influence or one time I was. or what? One time I was, yeah. Mm -hmm. I was walking down the street. I had, I had chose to walk to the store instead of drive that night and uh, I had my weapon with me. At least you weren't driving. All right, I believe as chair, I do have to say that none of these would preclude no. the permit. No, there are no felonies. But there uh, are a, a quite an accumulation. So if you are, are you gonna be working with a record and towing, is that what it is? Uh, the company Tow Pro. Tow Pro. Uh -huh. So are you gonna try to carry a weapon? Oh, no sir. Why not? You're no, gonna sir. be in hostile situations towing people's cars or something. Well, I've been told that this is an, um, this isn't repo, this okay. is honest towing. Um, and since this trouble, I've met a woman and had a child, and I face a stiff penalty if I'm caught with another weapon, and it's not worth leaving my family. Do you have any weapons weapon. anymore? I do not, no. So you won't be performing any non-consent towing? TOPRO has the, uh, as an emergency company, they automatically have the authority to do non-consent towing. Uh, I'm not aware that they're doing any repossession towing. Okay. Obviously, they could do repossession towing, but I'm not aware that they do that. Not as a daily practice. Well, they're not a fly-by-night operation. I've been in constant contact with a, a woman named Shannon from the company. She, for one reason or another, she couldn't be here with me today. She told yeah. me to mention that I was definitely a potential hire. We would only wrong. issue a permit if the companies have right. indicated if they're not on their list, we're not going to, we, we would right. not issue a permit. Okay. All right. I would make a motion to approve um, with the condition that it's with TOPRO for a period of one year. I have a motion. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Mr. Brooks, you are approved with the restriction to uh, tow pro. For one year? One year. Okay. Gun free. Great. Great. Thank you I for would, your time. I would assume that t typically what would happen if it's a company that operates to tow pro also operates yeah. uh, cotton. So they could work the same employer. Same employer. Okay. So as long as the same employer we're okay. All right. Thank you. Great. Thank you all. Thank you. Next we have uh, Mr. Casey. Mr. Casey? It was deferred from January. Motion to deny. Motion to deny. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 The application denied. Mr. McIntyre? <laughs> Mr. McIntyre's application failed to disclose driving on a suspended license that was in October of 2012. How'd you forget that one? It was uh, suspended over a ticket and I paid the ticket and it didn't show that my license was active and when I went to court I showed the proof that I paid it online and they dismissed it. How'd you forget to report it? I, did, I figured the expungement, I know what expungement means, and I didn't, I thought dismissal was different, but I should have put it, and uh, I didn't. And I since then have reapplied and put everything on there, it's supposed to be on there, but they said I had to come in front of y'all and see what, see what y'all think about it, and if you give me a second chance. In the disclosure, I put everything I could possibly think of going all the way back to, you know, high school days, you know, I was underage. But I just missed that one. Any 
you also been working with Toe Pro and Cotton? Yes, sir. Any further questions for Mr. McIntyre? Nope. Is there a motion? Motion to approve Mr. McIntyre's application. We have a motion for approval. I believe probably with the intent to say restricted to Topro and Cotton's towing. I hadn't, but <laughs> <laughs> it's a consensus. But I'll. I'll, I'll Modify or amend my motion to uh, approve Mr. McIntyre's application restricted to Toe Pro and Cotton right. for six, six months. Six months. And after six months, then if I have to stay with Toe Pro or Cottons, if I, I, I haven't actually worked there. Let, let us uh, vote on the motion first, okay? okay. <laughs> well, that's what that's what we have on here where it says where you will be employed. Yeah. So that that's my plan, but uh, okay. You know, there's a lot of tow companies out there. And do we have a, we have a second? second? Any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. You're approved. That's your, and after six, six months. Let me explain the process. Your 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 permit will be issued by our office for Cottons and Topro. If it, within that six month period you want to go somewhere else, you'll have to come back in front of the commission. If you do that, I would recommend you bring a representative from the company you want to go to in front of this commission, and you'll need to share with them why you didn't want to stay at Toe Pro and you wanted to go to whatever other company, okay? My intent is to stay with Toe Pro. I was right. just asking the question just so yeah, I know. That, right. I but understand. after six months, you can do whatever you want. Correct. Absolutely. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, next is Mr. White. Mr. White. Mr. White was originally scheduled to be at the uh, January meeting. He was not present. It was deferred until today. The reason he was coming to the meeting, he failed to disclose the 2011 DUI charge on his initial application. But you remember the DUI from 2003 and 2006? Yes, sir. Uh, I wasn't trying to not disclose anything. I um, went through a period of time I lost a, a wife and I, I had a permit previously and um, went through a, a period in time after I lost my wife of doing a lot of drinking and had some mishaps with uh, the law and stuff and lost my insurance of course with the DUI uh, so I wasn't able to uh, repo so I, I'm vice president as well so I worked in the office but uh, since then, I'm, I don't drink at all anymore. Cleaned all my uh, record up, got my insurance back, and that's why I was reapplying so that I could continue on. But we somehow forgot the 2011. Yes, sir. I, I didn't. I didn't have a copy of my. I just forgot it. Basically, I mean, I've, I had a couple of implied consents during that time, and I, I really went through a bad period and. Uh, I wasn't trying to not disclose anything. I put put everything down except that. <clears throat> Other questions for Mr. White? No. Is there a motion? I make a motion to approve. We have a motion to approve. Is there a second? We have a motion to second. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Thank you. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Is there any other business? I do have one bit of business, and this may actually be as more challenging than anything else we've had today. <laughs> oh, Lord. The, I know it sounds that way. March 23rd is the next scheduled meeting of the, of the commission. Uh, a couple of folks, the chair has already advised me he could not be present. Uh, Mr. McNally cannot be present at the March 23rd meeting. Um, it is all it, that is apparently Metro Spring Break uh, during that week, so there are going to be other folks that that can't. So I sent an email out independently to the com to the commission, and independently you responded back. Um, I su I would suggest March 30th. However, Miss Marco cannot be at the March 30th meeting. But to my knowledge, she's the only one that said she could not be present on the 30th. 
everybody else could be. So I, while I hate to preclude her from being in a meeting, um, having an, an opportunity to have just moving the meeting now, we just need to put a notice on the website. You, it's your schedule. You certainly we're required to meet, but we can move it. I'm good with the 30th. Yep. I think maybe since you passed the agenda, but the schedule by motion, if you'd somewhat move it. All right. Make a motion to move the March 23rd meeting to March 30th at 1.30 p.m. I have a motion. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. I have no more agenda items for you. Move to adjourn. We're done. One other business I tried to look at my schedule. No, I, I think we're done for today, but. Well, if you adjourn the meeting, you certainly could, you can't take action once the meeting's adjourned. If you adjourned it, it's adjourned. I'm mm -hmm. sorry. Yeah. I, um, I mean, informally, you can listen to what he has to say. I don't think anything will keep you from doing that. We're all sitting in an open room, but you couldn't discuss it. And you can't make, take action on it. Would that be true? Yes. You can't deliberate or vote. So you can hear it because I'm assuming the cameras are now not moving. Are they still moving? Uh, could they reopen the meeting if they chose to? Yes. It's your call. Is this an agenda item? It's not an agenda. Not that I'm aware. I mean, I don't have. It's on the, the mark, you know, that I put in rule three and other business on my note. He did put other business on his request to speak. Yeah, that's certainly commissions. I, I, I didn't have it for the agenda, but certainly I okay. Oh, I'll make a motion to reopen the meeting for 10 minutes. 10 minutes. 10 we minutes. have a motion. Second. Motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All right. Thank you so much. As in all public <laughs> sessions, Mr. Wolderkin, you have two minutes. Okay, no problem. We use your time wisely, and the timer is on. This, okay, thank you so much. I appreciate your consideration. Uh, I wanted to bring in a couple things today. Uh, this is, uh, one is insurance, uh, driver insurance. Uh, right now we have a requirement that uh, the airport is uh, asking us to have a 300,000 minimum requirement uh, be put on in uh, and also I wanted to speak about uh, enforcement in general but I know this is a catchy subject uh, where the limos maybe other uh, other passenger uh, vehicle for hire where they are standing like in the hotels and other staff where they don't have calls and you know, we need some kind of enforcement where they, if they don't have a customer, they shouldn't be, you know, like they're supposed to be like cruising, you know, in, in we need some help uh, from the director. But uh, on the insurance, uh, really that is uh, creating a lot of issue uh, for all uh, the drivers, uh, including the companies, the taxi companies, uh, to fulfill the requirement for the airport. And uh, we are looking at uh, getting more drivers on the road, and that is basically deterring drivers from coming into the taxi business, into the driving business. Can I ask the, the Mr. Fields a question? Do we have any authority over what the airport the, requires? Because they're within Davis County, they have to at least do the minimum that we require because that's to operate Davis County, which is right. 5,150. The airport authority uh, has, by by their authority under state law and metro law, they can make other additional rules. They, they did decide that for taxi cabs to come onto the property, they'd have to have a 300 single event limit, very much like we have the million for the other vehicles for hire, and that would go into effect now. Right. And then next January, we 500,000. I just, I just want to clarify but, for, but we don't for have the record, we don't have the authority to overdo all. what they do. That's their yeah. call. Yeah, the airport. Just the so airport you know, it has nothing to do with us. They control their property. Second question, I also want to ask: Do private entities like hotels, etc., have the right to allow whoever they want in on their properties to pick people up and do whatever they want to do on private property? Anybody can do what they want. I mean, within the law, they can. If they have a, a taxi cab could stand on private property, a limousine could stand on private property with permission of the property owner. 
Uh, a limousine is not allowed on. A, nobody's allowed on a taxi cab stand other yep. than taxi cab. I understand. Uh, if if that's going on, then certainly I want to know which stands are at. Uh, no. Limousines should not be standing in loading and unloading zones, and yet no other vehicle should be standing in a loading and unloading zone. Again, if that's also going on, we need to know that. Private property, unfortunately, we don't have any authority. If a, if they want to have it on their property, right. there's nothing that would preclude it. I mean, I just, the only reason I'm saying this, because I saw it today, I work at the Music City Center, and there are limousines and um, carts at the Omni, but they're on the Omni property. So if Omni allows it, that's their call. I believe that is wrong, though. Well, if you look at the other passenger for higher ordinance that we put here a few years back, mm -hmm. they are not supposed to be there unless they have a call, unless they are picking up somebody. That's not like a taxi stand or a limo stand. It, I mean, you know, we can say that this the private property, they can be there, uh, you know, but I mean, we have rules. We need to look at those rules and enforce them. Well, that, that's why I asked mm -hmm. Mr. Fields the question. I'm, I'm not familiar with I mean, I, It's possible I missed it, but what, I'm, what I have been told all along, the Omni has put... They, uh, I'm just using them as an example. Sure. I don't want to say oh, that well, just, people. I just saw it today. I, don't, I have people I know there. They're not going <laughs> to... Yeah, I'm just saying it. It's happening everywhere. Not, not just, I know. Uh, I'm just trying to get clarification. It's the same thing with the insurance. I mean, if they have a call, you know, normally they would have uh, some kind of record. They're picking somebody. It's okay. They can go ahead and pick it up. Otherwise, they're standing there uh, doing extracurricular activities, you know. Uh, Nobody's. Uh, we're trying well, to protect our business. Basically, that's. No, what I understand. The only I understand. the only place I could see is your. Are you talking about the prearrangement issue? Yeah, prearrangement. Well, prearrangement is a little bit different than that on private property. Prearrangement, uh, again, private property in this state anyway outweighs almost everything else because of, just from a private property standpoint, if if they choose to let a vehicle sit on that property, I'm not sure I have the authority to order them off. Now, if they're on public property and they're and they don't have prearrangement, in other words, if we had an area that was public and they were there, we I think we might have authority. But I'm, I, we'll certainly. I mean, we can investigate. And if it's if it's illegal, we'll certainly. If it's non-compliant with the ordinance, illegal is not the right term. But if if they're not compliant with this ordinance, we'll certainly take action on it. But I, it's it's been for a lot of years. Metro Legal has advised me once it's on the private property, they have the authority on their property, not me. And, the, and the only reason I say that is I want you to understand that we're not against you on this panel no, I, I, here. I, I yeah. But but there are things, you know, it's, it's like the whole Uber Lyft thing. We have no control over what happens with Uber well, Lyft. I, I did go with that, but I'm not going to bring it up now. Well, we don't. It's, not, it's yeah. the it's state not regulates. The, <laughs> it's the not. state may have the right, but we are living within the state, so I don't see why we cannot argue with the state. You can. You can. But, you but, but we can't. We're supposed to be represented by the commission here. So the commission have some... Wait, I, I'm pretty sure you guys have some voice than we do. Well, it's not a representation. We're, no, yeah. we, we, we work at the, underneath the Metro Council. So if anybody were to go to the state, it would be the city and Metro Council. I'm not saying they can, but that's not yeah, for yeah, us I'm to legislate. I'm talking about if we versus going through the commission, through the council, through the letters, we'll have a better voice over there you than the we're just going over there ourselves. And I think it's a state, unfortunately, I think it's a state issue and you well, get to work with the and state. And I think that. you're right, but in order, if the, t if, if the city of Nashville were to, for instance, take up that issue, the proper, the, pre the procedure would follow is the Metro Council would actually take action, they would pass some sort of it's a non-binding resolution to ask either this commission or Metro Legal to go to the state legislature or the appropriate state agency. So if the council were to order us, the police, or anybody other agency, we could do that. This commission doesn't have the authority to go directly to the state legislature to lobby one or the other. We have the authority to deal with what's in the ordinance. But in, in, in that, and again, I trust me, you got you remember we're the ones that passed the the first ordinance in the state that 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 I mean, regulated. The TNCs and all the others. Yeah, they took our ordinance and put it for the state. And a it's really absolutely. Yeah. So again, I, we're we're not opposing what you're saying is, and we'll do further research on the other on the on the issue. But I think meeting with your member of the Metro Council is probably the, the the next best step. If they come back and ask us to whatever action they may ask us to do, we we'll, we'll, we'll try. But I think it would take city. 
it would take the city policy agency, which is the Metro Council, to do something. Yeah. By my motion, which was uh, passed a few mo ten, 10 yes, minutes yeah. and 30 seconds ago, we are adjourned. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Jerry, I have a question. Oh. <laughs> I thought I'd try to rescue her. Okay. Sorry. Well, that was I quite a sigh. I was worried it was my daughter calling.